the U.S. Army All-American Bowl, an annual tradition of the nation's top-ranked high school football stars. It's helped to springboard the careers of many NFL greats, like Adrian Peterson, Jamal Charles, angling for the pylon, touchdown! And Andrew Luck. Now, a new class of America's best steps onto the field to showcase their talents in the spotlight. They hail from all over the country and have come together to hone their skills and make their name a household one. I'm Kyle Allen, number one quarterback recruit in the nation. My name is Dante Booker, I'm the top outside linebacker in the country. My name is Trey Quinn, I hold the national career record for receiving yards. Jonathan McClary with the inside give and inside the end zone goes Derrick Henry. Each one looking to turn their Friday playing days into Saturdays and declare their intent to the schools to which they've been heavily recruited. Today's the big day. It's my decision day. That's what it's all about. Stay tuned for my college declaration. I'm Quentin Nelson. Joe Mixon. Tony Michelle. I am a U.S. Army All-American. Today I am a U.S. Army All-American. Here's a live look inside the Alamo Dome here in downtown San Antonio. We are moments away from the kickoff of the 15th annual U.S. Army All-American game, the best against best. It's East against West. The action will begin in moments right there on that field. Right now, let's take a sneak peek inside the locker room. You represent me. You represent the other 1.1 million soldiers that serve our nation, that put themselves in harm's way so you can do this today. Make them proud. Oh? Yes, sir. All right, we'll see you on the high ground. Army strong. Yes, You're going to represent our soldiers. You've got many soldiers out there in the audience today watching you. You've got your whole Army community across the world going to be watching you. And you're wearing U.S. Army All-American. The colors of black and gold. And that really means something. Enjoy the game. Have fun. That's a big part of it as well. <coughs> but I want you to go beat that West Ham. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh, Thank you for being with us. Welcome inside the Alamo Dome. I'm Paul Burmeister. The example of the kind of talent, the high-level talent this game produces every single year, we are surrounded by it this weekend. If you admire Sammy Watkins and Taj Boyd and their play in the Orange Bowl last night, they got their start right here in the U.S. Army All-American game. Looking forward to Wild Card Weekend and what Andrew Luck and Jamal Charles and LaShawn McCoy can do. They got their taste of the big time, the big stage right here at this game. It's not just the talent on the field, though. It's the intrigue. These nine players will tell us live on the sideline throughout the broadcast where they will be playing their college football. Always look forward to that in this game. And I'm looking forward to the commentary of my partners throughout the game. To my immediate left, Anthony Heron, and to my far left, Ross Tucker. And uh, we just saw the list of the players who are going to let us know where they're going to play this year. You know exactly what that's like, Anthony. You selected right. Iowa, which was a wise choice, over <laughs> Michigan and Michigan State all those years ago. Just think about the pressure that's on teenagers today, Paul, to make a life changing decision, life changing for them, for their families. As you think about the future becoming adults, choosing a college, when I had to make that decision, Ross, I almost cried once I finally had that weight off my shoulders. Well, and there's been a different pressure all week for these guys. For most of these guys, it's the first time they've gone against BCS level competition. We are able to see who's risen to the occasion and who has struggled a little bit. Now, that's one thing. Now you have to think from the practice field to the game field. We'll see who excels in that environment right now. You know who we expect to excel? The number one ranked quarterback in the nation. That would be Kyle Allen. I've been impressed with Kyle Allen seeing him in person because the tangibles are there. There's arm strength. But what's really intangible about him is the way that his teammates gravitate towards him. He's the number one pro-style quarterback in the country. And he's toured the country over the last couple of seasons showing off his skills. And he's won top honors at almost every one of the major passing camps. But when you look at the way that his teammates react to him, you know why Kevin Sumlin recruited him to Texas A&M. And Kyle Allen has still tried to play recruiter to bring in some of that additional talent with him. And he's going to show off all that to Anthony, all that talent, Anthony, in moments, but right now he is live on the sideline with Marty Snyder. Certainly excited to head to Texas A&M. He's got some business this afternoon to take care of first. Kyle, is this a different level of competition than you've maybe ever seen in your career? It's a much different level. Blown out in pads with all these great kids, all these top recruits. 
is, it's been a change, but we've gotten used to it and our team's ready to play. When you head to Texas A&M, a lot of people are saying you're going to replace Johnny Manziel. I guess, A, do, do you like that or is that pressure you'd rather not have as an incoming freshman? I mean, if they're telling me I'm going to replace him, I like it. It's a chance to do it, but I got to do, I got to get there and I got to do it first. So nothing's for sure yet. I'm going to try and get the starting position. And Paul, he's not wasting any time. He's heading to College Station on Tuesday, making the drive there. Oh. Going to get a head start on winter conditioning and also spring football. If you're like many and you watched the Orange Bowl last night and thought the Ohio State defense could use a little bit of help, <laughs> help is on the way. It really is. Dante Booker, an outside linebacker, was the U.S. Army Defensive Player of the Year in the entire country and the number one player in the state of Ohio. He is unbelievably explosive. This is exactly how you draw it up. He's the best blitzing linebacker off the ball that I've seen all week. He has perfect timing, knows exactly when to hit the gaps, and he's got the length and the explosiveness to be able to get to the quarterback once he knifes through the offensive line. He has been unbelievably impressive. One of eight Buckeyes in this game, and based on our declaration today, there might be even more. Yeah, Buckeyes doing very well in this game, and of course, Alabama does pretty well, too. Here is Barton Simmons, 24-7 national recruiting analyst, with his thoughts on the Crimson Tide. Yeah, no surprise. Alabama is sitting at number one in the national recruiting rankings, and today they've got a chance to extend that lead. Uh, three announcement ceremonies where Alabama is going to have a hat on the table, but nipping at their heels is Ohio State at number two. They've got a couple of guys announced today that they're heavily favored for, and then keep an eye out west. UCLA and USC both battling for some major prospects. Uh, Lewis hanging on with one of those guys is a big piece of the puzzle. All right, here with Joe Mixon, who arrived here ranked by 24-7 Sports as the number one ranked all-purpose back in the nation. You came in with almost 50 offers at one point. You got it down to three. You're not declaring right now, but how tough was it to whittle it just down to the three? Well, it was very hard. Um, you know, I had a lot of options, and um, my, basically my choice. And, you know, I basically prayed to God, you know, whatever, you know, whatever, basically whatever fit, that fit me the best. And, you know, I'm looking at whatever school I go to today, you know, I'm looking to do a uh, major impact there instantly. And what is it that you want people to see today in your talents in this game? Well, I want them to see whatever I can do. You know, I want to be able to, you know, basically show off everything I got, you know, running, catching, blocking, everything. All right, Joe, good luck. We look forward to seeing you play today and that declaration. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Lewis, Joe, thank you very much. And uh, the moment we've all been waiting for about to take place, the special teams on the field. The kickoff about to take place and get started here for us. You can watch along with us the 15th annual U.S. Army All-American Bowl. Here's what we have for you today. The 90 best high school football players in the nation. Some of the top talent we've already mentioned. Dante Booker, Mr. Football in Ohio on his way to Ohio State. The top quarterback in the nation, Kyle Allen. We just listened to Joe Mixon, the number one all-purpose running back. 87 others to watch as well, and we are underway. And the rules of this game will play 12-minute quarters. The defense somewhat limited. They cannot blitz. And the defense has to also play in that 4-3 scheme. And some rules also to the special teams. No onside kicks, no matter what the score is, coming up when we get to the fourth quarter. And the starting quarterback for the east side, Mr. Football in the state of North Carolina, on his way to be a Florida Gator. That's Mr. Will Greer. Check out. Dale back is Sony Michelle, but he's in an empty backfield. He dumps it off to Michelle. And the future Georgia Bulldog shows he can not only run the ball, but catch it as well. That's one of the things that the Georgia coaches really like about Sony Michelle is his versatility, his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. This guy burst onto the scene as an eighth grader. He had 1,800 yards down at American Heritage High School in eighth grade. That is unbelievable. How many players can you say by the time they were done with ninth grade, they had over 3,500 rushing yards? Will Greer trying to rush the ball as well, but he is brought down. 
just after he crossed the line of scrimmage, the line of scrimmage brought down by Buda Baker, who will be an Oregon Duck next fall. We got to look at the interesting element of Will Greer's game because when you look at multiple recruiting services, some people list him as a pro-style quarterback. Some people actually do list him as a dual-threat guy. I kind of see him in that Colt McCoy sort of mold. He's probably not used to somebody being able to close on him like that. <laughs> you know, when you're playing private school ball in North Carolina, you're not going to have a lot of guys like Buddha Baker, who's going to Oregon, running the alley and carving you up like that. You mentioned the talent well, level, Ross, and uh, to well, a player, they all mentioned how much they appreciated playing against this kind of talent. And how about the West Front Seven? Throwing down Nick Chubb, who will be a Georgia Bulldog next year, and he would like to see some more holes. Didn't see one there. Well, Chubb's good, but he's not this good. You see a great job by Solomon Thomas, number 17, closing the front side. So Chubb had to try to go back to the backside, but there was all kinds of West defenders right there. Usually it's pretty difficult to run the football in all-star games like this. Will Greer taking a break after he led the first series and hats off to that West defense. Stepping up there on second and third down. And we'll get our first look at the West offense from the 26-yard line. That's a 40-yard punt. And we're looking forward to seeing the top-ranked quarterback in the nation coming up here before he heads to Texas A&M. You can watch him right here in a matter of moments. Kyle Allen on the field up next. Really like what's happening inside the Alamo Dome. Temperature always perfect and the talent level always high for the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. The 90 best high school players in the nation putting their talents on the line. And we also look forward to nine of the best announcing their college intentions throughout the game. We look forward to our first declaration here in the first quarter. Speaking of number one, top-ranked quarterback in the nation, Kyle Allen, before he goes to Texas A&M on Tuesday to begin his college career, starts off the west side. Cal right to the air, or he would like to go right to the air, going to his left. And that's not an easy throw. Completes to KD Cannon, who will be a Baylor Bear. Athletic play by Kyle Allen to pick up 17. Not an easy throw on the move, rolling left, having to torque those shoulders, get them all the way back around. This is the element I love of Kyle Allen's game because he's as accurate as any quarterback I've seen coming out of high school in the past five years. We saw that feature during the skills challenge they had earlier in the week. His favorite NFL quarterback is Russell Wilson. We saw a little bit of Russell Wilson there and a little bit of wiggle from Jalen Brown. Going to be an Oregon duck in, showing some skill there, picking up 10. Well, you see this play all the time at every level of football now. Just a quick wide receiver screen. It only works, though, if you get good blocks on the edge, and that's exactly what Jalen Brown got. Kyle Allen uh, following a trend many of the quarterbacks show now, going to campus early. He graduated from high school, going to get a head start on trying to be the man who replaces Johnny Manziel. He's got a pair of big wideouts, and it's 6'6", six six, Frank Inacho. Or I had it show, pardon me. I had it show. He's going to let us know throughout the broadcast where he will go to college. He hauls that one in. I had it to an interesting story because he's a player who really mainly focused on basketball throughout most of his time in high school, just burst onto the scene this year. Ihanacho actually gave up basketball or football his junior year, and giving up the football there was Kyle Allen. Never brought it in in there to scoop it up for the west side. The future South Carolina game guy, Bryson Allen Williams. Well, you expect to have some quarterback center exchange issues, but not really out of the shotgun. It was just a little to the right, and then Allen not able to secure the football. Allen Williams, who's had an unbelievable week, everybody to a man has talked about him. As you can see, Kyle Allen mic'd up for us here this afternoon, so we not only get to watch, we get to take a listen to his interaction with his West teammates, and who knows, maybe some interaction with the East side as well. Our first declaration, the first of nine, is coming up next. Stick around and find out where Brian Wallace will attend college after this. Lou Baker, I'm committed to the University of Oregon. Hi, my name is Dante Sawyer, and I'm committed to the University of South Carolina. Hi, I'm Trey Layla, you're much proud, I'm committed to Texas. 
So we know where they're going. We're about to find out where Brian Wallace is going to play his college football. Lewis Johnson has us covered there. And they are big smiles down here. Big Brian Wallace, 6'6", 294 pounds, a big offensive lineman. And he's got three hats out here along with his high school coaches where they racked up over 45 points per game at Christian Brothers High School in St. Louis, Missouri. So, Brian, here we stand with three hats. We've got Alabama, Iowa, and Arkansas. And the question we want to know as we begin this show, where are you going to play your college football? Well, uh, I will be taking my talents to the University of Arkansas. Arkansas Razorbacks, okay. So, we've already heard that a lot of the SEC coaches think that you have a lot of upside. Where are some of the areas you think you can improve as you move to the college game? I would just say my size, my speed, and just more technique. More technique, all right. Dad, you happy about this decision? Yes, yes sir, I am. All right, I know your mom couldn't be here, but I know she's proud of you as well. Congratulations and good luck at Arkansas. Paul? All right, Brett Bielma trying to turn it around at Arkansas. Good news there already. We know how Brett Bielema loves to run the football, and Brian Wallace is a road grader. But the thing is that he's an athletic road grader. I believe the quickest feat of any offensive tackle in this game is defenders try to disengage. He's able to stay in position, plays with great leverage and extreme intensity. So that's only one out of nine. Eight more live in-game declarations on the way here in the U.S. Army. All-American Bowl. Also have some pretty good action on the field after a fumble recovery. Here's Will Greer for his second series. He's got some room to run, keeps it himself. And that is a first down for the E-Squad. Will Greer keeps it himself for 11. And you said it earlier. Anthony, about his athleticism, he's sneakily athletic. You know, they don't run a lot of read option, but he can scramble and make plays with his feet. This is a guy that was able to dunk in seventh grade at six foot one, which tells you a little bit about his explosiveness and athletic ability. And you know what? The way Florida played this year, he might need to use that athleticism if he gets a chance to get on the field next year. His tailback also on his way to play college football in the SEC. One of two Georgia tailbacks on display today, Sony Michelle. There's Sony right up the middle, putting his head down and fighting for some extra yardage. Down to the 32, that's a gain of four. Our 24-7 national recruiting analyst on the field is Barton Simmons. Ryan Wallace, he chose a school that was winless in the SEC at Arkansas over a school that won a national championship last year at Alabama. The reason for that? Playing time. You look at Dan Skipper, Denver Kirkland, two guys that were 24-7 sports, freshman All-American under Sam Pittman at the University of Arkansas. That's a big issue there, being able to play early, contribute, and this is a kid that I think can do that because of his body. And also, I would imagine, Barton, that Brett Bielma's was history of developing offensive linemen for the NFL at Wisconsin. You think about Joe Thomas was there, Travis Travis Frederick, a first-round pick last year, likely played into it as well. And I can speak from experience. I was in Brett Bielema's first recruiting class at the University of Iowa. His very first year as a full-time coach there. He's got a charisma about him. We know all the great players that he brought in, as you referenced, Paul, while he was at Wisconsin. And now he's trying to bring that same mentality, getting players from that Midlands region where he's got a lot of ties, bringing them to Arkansas. Not only were you in his first recruiting class, I think you were his very first <laughs> recruit he landed. You've done your homework, sir. <laughs> we were spending some time together back in Iowa City in, the, in those days. Second down and long. Will Greer stepping up and firing, and uh, that's the proverbial. I was on one page, and my wide receiver was on another, looking for the future Buckeye, Johnny Dixon. And you expect to see that sometimes here in All-Star games, just like the fall start on the previous play. There's going to be some jitters. There's going to be some level of uncomfortability just because these guys haven't played together that long. They played about a week now they've had a bunch of practices the guys have worked hard but still it's different when you get out here in live game action sometimes the numbers on will greer are staggering oh yeah <laughs> my favorite one 837 yards in one game 10 touchdown passes and his team won 104 to 80. <laughs> incomplete and that's also a big hit for Jaleel Wadud who will play his college football for the UCLA Bruins. We know Jim Moore loves defensive backs and he loves them to play with physicality and especially with Wadud going to UCLA we know the spread offenses that are there in the Pac-12 conference and so you have to be able to tackle nowadays as a corner Ross and it's becoming more prevalent where guys can not only cover but be physical. Well, and you talked to some of the people this week, and they said Jaleel Wadud was really one of two defenders for the West squad that stood out to him during the week of practice. 
So the East team unable to take advantage of the fumble recovery. Nice job by the West team again. You can see they can't rush that punt. And the West, West squad will begin with more than 90 yards to go. So hopefully, they think, the game's first touchdown. Can you imagine NFL Hall of Famer Anthony Munoz as a veterinarian? Well, neither could he until he used the Army's new strength match tool. If Hall of Famer Anthony Munoz hadn't played football, the strengths that made him a star could have led him in another direction in the U.S. Army. Sergeant, I have to say, when I saw the uh, results of my strength match here, I was very surprised. There's a variety of jobs in the Army. Firefighter, explosive ordnance disposal, and then a veterinarian. Right, you know, most people, you know, when they think the Army, they think, uh, oh, the infantry or, or, or a combat job like that. And actually, that's a very small portion of the Army. There's a ton of different jobs that you get selected from. Sergeant, thank you for your insights. All right, thank you. Also, a good time to remind you, you can watch uh, both NFL Wild Card Weekend games today. Later on NBC, immediately following us, we go to Indianapolis for the Chiefs and the Colts. And right after that, also on NBC, it is the Saints and the Eagles. This is the top-ranked quarterback of the nation, Kyle Allen. Flipping it out to one of his tall receivers, Frank Ihanicho. He's 6'6". He also has Mark Roberts, number 81, who is 6'6". Ihanicho picks up four. What impresses me about the game of Frank Ihanicho is the fact that he looks comfortable as a wide receiver. A lot of times you see people transition from track or basketball, and they try to become football players, but it doesn't quite look fluid. It doesn't quite look confident, but Ihanicho is a guy who looks like a natural wide receiver. With the ball, a name you're going to recognize going down to the backfield. Nice job by the East defense for a loss there, but that's Christian McCaffrey. His father, Ed, played football at Stanford, just like Christian is going to do before he went on to an excellent NFL career with the Denver Broncos. But it's not just his father, Ed, who was an athlete at Stanford. His mother played soccer there as well. I talked about Joe Mixon being the top all-purpose back in the country, but overall, from a productivity standpoint, Christian McCaffrey has probably been the guy who's been most productive during the week. There you see his grandfather, who in 1960 was the fastest man in the world. Kyle Allen underthrows there to Jalen Brown. And there to make the play for the east side, Bryson Allen Williams. Linebacker on his way to South Carolina. So far, yeah, you really have to be impressed by the poise that Allen has showed. I mean, even under duress, he didn't get as much on that football as he wanted to, but he's impressed me all week just with his poise. He is one cool customer. I stand corrected. Jalen Brown made the play there. Picking up the first down for the west side. Kyle Allen keeping it himself. His tailback now is Royce Freeman. Christian McCaffrey steps out of the game. Allen did run the read option a little bit in high school, but he said when they read it, they were pulling the ball to throw. He very rarely ran the ball at Desert Mountain High School. And he also told us, I thought it was interesting, that you know, AM wasn't really as much on the radar until the success they had the last two years with Johnny Football in the SEC. It's just a good example of one program-changing recruit like Manziel can lead to more like Allen. Go. Cal Allen now on second down and nine. Nice pocket to step into. Delivers the ball a little bit low, but once again, Jalen Brown, that's two times on this drive. He's gone down to catch a ball. That time for 10 and another West team first down. Where Kyle Allen is beyond his years as a passer is the places he can locate the football. That was completely on purpose. He knew I had to throw it towards the sideline, low and away, because there's a defender in a trail position who can potentially make a play. The level of accuracy that he has is definitely beyond his years. Nice of you to mention accuracy, Anthony, because he's six for six. Go! 100% not a bad way to start. Go ahead and make that 7 for 7. The first catch from Mark Andrews, who will be in Oklahoma sooner. And he is cut down right away. Number 22 is Eric Smith. Well, and if you're not sure who makes the play at corner for the East, just say the Glenville guy. Because you see Eric Smith right there. Marshawn Lattimore, his teammate from Glenville, plays much the same way. Both of them will be declaring today teammates at Glenville High School. We'll see if they stay teammates at the next level. Yeah, a lot of people expecting they'll be Ohio State Buckeyes. Ohio State already has eight players playing in this game. And Glenville's certainly a pipeline. 
Number 18 with the reception is Trey Quinn. He is only the all-time receiving leader in the nation. He'll take his talents to LSU in the fall. Broke the record of Doriel Green Beckham, who we had here on this field two seasons ago in the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. And Trey Quinn, just two years later, has broken the all-time career receiving record of Green Beckham. And we know the level of success that Green Beckham has had, or a.k.a. DGB at Missouri. Running the ball for the first time, that's Nathan Starks out of Cherry Creek High School, just outside of Denver. That was a man's tackle right there by Bryson Allen Williams. Only 16 years old. He's been one of the most impressive guys all week. He's from Georgia, but he's going to South Carolina. Every coach I spoke to this week and watching him with my own eyes, I've been unbelievably impressed with his athleticism. Again, only 16 years old, flying around making plays. First down off the play action. Kyle Allen wants to throw back to his tailback. He throws that one into coverage. There is his first incompletion. He had completed his first eight passes. We've seen Allen under duress a couple of times in the pocket so far early in this game. People like Dante Sawyer have gotten pressure on him a couple of times. He's had to throw off his back foot. And these off-platform throws are where the arm strength of a quarterback get tested even more. That time, Contavious Street was able to apply the heat. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see Contavious Street applying more heat. He's been extremely impressive this week. The guy squats 655 pounds. His lower body power is out of control. Setting up the screen is Kyle Allen. And that's Joe Mixon. He will announce his college intention later on today. What you need to know right now, that's the number one all-purpose back in the nation. Keep in mind that Joe Mixon is six foot two. So as a tailback, that's a little tall for what you're looking for. But you know about the versatility he has because he's still so elusive. He can drop his weight. He can apply weight to both sides and still be able to make quick, elusive moves, evading defenders in space. Tweeted his final schools in early December. UCLA, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, and Cal. Cal has since been eliminated. He'll let you know later today if he be, he'll be a Bruin, a Badger, or a Sooner. Kyle Allen fires that one incomplete, looking for his favorite receiver so far, Jalen Brown. And broken up by a man we've discussed already, number 22, Eric Smith from Cleveland. He'll announce his college intentions later in the game. Boy, they know how to make defensive backs at Glenville, don't they? I mean, Dante Whitner, Christian Bryant, who plays for the Buckeyes right now. He was injured this year. It just seems like every year there's one or two. And this year, both the corners for the East, at least two of the guys that will see a lot of playing time today, are the Glenville duo. Play action to Joe Mixon and Kyle Allen flushed out. And just fires that one away. Nice job by the east side with that pass rush. In is Jalen Holmes. No surprise on where he's going. Ohio State. Yeah, he's going to Ohio State as well. He's one of the most physically imposing guys here. They ran a stunt, and Trevante Valentine came around. Allen did well, really, just to get rid of the ball. And that's what Kyle told us. He said the biggest adjustment for him this week has been throwing with big guys in his face. He's used to going against top-notch defensive backs from the 7-on-7 seven -seven series, but this is the first time he's had big guys right up in his grill. Go! Got to get down inside the two-yard line or the end zone. And look into the end zone, but falling incomplete. Markel Pack, the future Florida State Seminole, couldn't come down with that one. That's a route that Kyle Allen throws with a lot of efficiency normally, being able to locate the football towards that back pile on, that back corner, throwing a fade route, a corner route, being able to locate it away from defenders. The Clayton Hatfield on to uh, attempt to erase those zeros. Off the scoreboard, Clayton going to kick at Texas Tech in the fall. And this is an attempt from, we expect for it to be an attempt, from 28 <laughs> yards away. Again, in that all-star game environment here, officials stepping in, making sure that the players are set. On the offense, five yards from the previous spot. Repeat fourth down. 
as much time as the guys have spent on the practice field this week, there's been a lot of other events that go on throughout the week in San Antonio. So maybe the, uh, the field goal team and the protection that goes with it hasn't been the focus of all the players. Clayton's just more comfortable from 33 yards away, that's all. Set him up for a time. Hop <laughs> <laughs> the up right there. We remain at zero. Almost got that one in. Little bit too much late draw. And we still have the scoreless tie. Kyle Allen started out eight for eight. And he was one for his last five. We have a declaration to listen to coming up next. The next man up from Virginia Beach, the wide receiver Jamil Kamara. Where's he going to play? He'll tell you next. And it is declaration time. Here's Marty Snyder. Well, Paul, a lot of schools ready for this one. Jamil Kamara with 4-5 speed. This year he had 20 for three touchdowns, 1,400 yards on the field. Here to enjoy the announcement with him, Mom Denise and Coach Carl Turner as well. Jamil, we're down to Wisconsin, Pittsburgh, and the University of Virginia. You're out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Who's it going to be? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank my family, all the schools for giving me a chance, and, of course, the Army Bowl. But I will be attending the University of Virginia. He's going to stay home for the University of Virginia. Mike London certainly gets a great pick. Why, Virginia? Was this a decision to stay at home? Yeah, staying at home close to my family, and it felt like the right school for me and the right offense and early playing time as a freshman. Big smile from Mom. Denise just confirmed that her little boy is going to stay at home for him, Paul. And Marty, I'm sure Mom likes the three-hour drive from Virginia Beach to Charlottesville. Very doable. And uh, he will be a Virginia Cavalier. His sense of excitement and relief with that decision out of the way, isn't it? Without a doubt. I mean, as I mentioned in the open, it, it going through this as a recruit, it really puts you in a position where you can take that weight off your shoulders finally. We have zeros on the scoreboard, and the East team back on. Elijah Hood, hey. the new tailback. Go. And we also have a new quarterback, Jacob Park. Dead ball. False start. And there is the next Virginia Cavalier, Jamil Kamara, basking in his moment here at the U.S. Army All-American Ball. Uh, obviously a tough year for the Virginia Cavaliers. They could use him. And my guess is he'll have the opportunity to play right away as a freshman. Virginia's got to get back to a bowl game like they had been able to do earlier in Mike London's tenure there in Virginia. So your new quarterback is Jacob Park, Mr. Football in the state of South Carolina. Didn't have offers from South Carolina or Clemson. Now he's going to play in Georgia. Good job of scooping that one up, but a nice job of taking him down. By the West team, that's a loss of 13. Martin has much more on the declaration of Jamil Kamara. He's going to go to Virginia. Yeah, never mind the two wins by Virginia this year. They still landed three of the top five players in the state of Virginia, did Mike London, and it was a loaded year in Virginia this year. So a really good pickup here in Jamil Kamara. Great job of Chip West and Mike London locking down Virginia Beach. They locked it in with Demetrius Nicholson a couple years ago. Smoke Mizell continued that tradition. Keep that uh, foothold in Virginia Beach, and you're going to turn things around quickly, Virginia. And making that sack moments ago, number 17 for the West Squad, Solomon Thomas. Turning the corner there, Elijah Hood. Decommitted to, no to Notre Dame so he can say, I'm going to stay home and play at North Carolina. That's a game of five. I was really impressed talking with Elijah Hood yesterday. Has a great hit on his shoulders. That's why he almost went to Notre Dame. But he thought, you know, I can get the same type of stuff in terms of a great academic institution right here closer to home. He's from Charlotte Catholic High School. And his lower body rivals Nick Chubb. I mean, you can see where these guys get the, their explosive power from. Elijah Hood said changing from Notre Dame to North Carolina had nothing to do with football or academics. Told us it had everything to do with family and staying close to home. Go. Jacob Park, nice pocket to step into. And that's a completion. Number 24 is Demetrius Johnson out of Annapolis, Maryland. Still deciding on where he's going to school. That was actually an incompletion. Bottom line is the East team pumping this one away. 
see the defensive front from the West starting to impose their will on the game a bit more. The one sack was, was, was from Solomon Thomas, but several of the other guys in the defensive front on the snaps that followed were able to get heat as well. Solomon Thomas on his way to, you might as well just say it with me, Ohio State. <laughs> Eight future Buckeyes at least, maybe more, playing on this day. Blocked punts. Goes out of bounds near the 15-yard line. Celebrating there, Dwight Williams, who's going to announce his college intention later today. It's really tough to do special teams here in All-Star Games because a lot of these guys aren't used to playing special team and you don't get a whole lot of practice time. And I mentioned Dwight's going to let us know throughout the broadcast uh, where he's going to play his college football. It's actually going to come up here in moments. Out of the powerful Sarah High School near Los Angeles. Let us know if he's staying home or going to take his talents far Set, away. Go. West team back with the football. And this is Drew Barker out of just outside of Cincinnati and Hebron, Kentucky, and had a chance to play all over the Big Ten or the ACC. He said, I want to help Mark Stoops do what he's doing, growing my home state school in Kentucky. He'll be a Wildcat. He's going there next week. He's continued to recruit additional talent, trying to get Mark Stoops into a bigger recruiting class. Talking to Barton Simmons earlier, Kentucky's really got a good class together so far. Water, it's water. And that's the end of quarter number one. We don't have a score, but we have declaration number three coming up. One of the top linebackers in the nation, Dwight Williams from just outside of Los Angeles. Where will he play his college football? He's about to let us know. Hi, I'm Dwight Williams, linebacker for the West. Stay tuned to find out where I'll be playing my college ball. Inside the Alamo Dome, we have two declarations in the books. Our next one is that man right there, Dwight Williams. He's on the sideline right now with our Lewis Johnson. All right, Paul, thanks very much. Well, there has been some major secrecy with this declaration for Dwight, his family here, now waiting to see exactly what this young linebacker is going to do. Dwight, the hat shuffle has been amazing. You have a lot of offers, but now we've got it down to five. This is amazing. So we have Oklahoma, Clemson, Florida, LSU, and UCLA. So everybody would like to know, where are you going to play your college football? Uh, first, I'd like to thank God for blessing me with this talent and each of these institutions right here for giving me a chance to play football. Very nice. Uh, for the next four years, I'll be getting my education at the University of California, Los Angeles. UCLA. Very interesting because at one point they seemed to be off the radar. Was this sort of the way to keep it quiet for yourself and for the for the school? Oh yes, definitely. That was the way to keep it quiet because you know in this day and age with the social media, it's kind of hard to keep stuff secret. Now you are now called an LB, a linebacker, but I also understand you want to be called at one point a JD, as in Juris Doctorate. Is that part of your decision? Yes, sir. All UCLA right. has a great law program. And I can't wait to get into it. Look at that smile on your mom's face. I think you made her happy as well. Dwight, congratulations. Good luck with the Bruins. Paul? Bruins with a big Sun Bowl victory over Virginia Tech. And a victory here as we start the second quarter. Well, Dwight Williams is 6'1". He's just a shade over 200 pounds. So people feel like there's potential for him to even move to safety at the next level. But I like him at linebacker. And even I like him at Mike linebacker because he's got a frame where he could add maybe 15, 20 pounds. And I believe at the next level with the way he he can get sideline to sideline and the way that he tackles people constantly bringing folks down out in space and ball skills that he has within the box i think he could be a guy who plays an excellent mic in the pac 12. he's going to get some excellent teaching there at ucla the linebacker coach jeff holbrick recently played 10 years in the national football league for the niners so a lot of positives for dwight williams in his future as a bruin Drew Barker, the quarterback for the west side, and down he goes. Stepping up and making the play for the east side, Dante Sawyer. He'll be a Gamecock next fall. Yeah, he's one of a couple of Georgia high school products that are going to South Carolina. You see the speed he had around the edge right there. And a lot of times for these offensive linemen, this is the first time they've really pass protected at this level. They're not used to going against defensive linemen with the speed of a guy like Sawyer. 
Tailback for the west side, Royce Freeman. Drew Barker rolling out to the right. And a nice job of locating his man down at the five-yard line. Drew Barker to pack first down west side. Let's check in with Barton Simmons on the sideline. Hey, guys, George Farmer, Marquise Lee, Robert Woods, all guys that came from Sarah where Dwight Williams plays his high school ball, all guys that went to USC. So as big as this is for US UCLA to land Dwight Williams, it's also really important to get into that Sarah program, stop that Trojan pipeline, and turn things around. A lot of those guys that Barton mentioned, offensive players. That Winnipeg will set a program out west. I mean, in California, they've had historically some of the best running backs and receivers that have come out of there. Timeout called by the west side. Dwight Williams just let us all know he'll play his college football at UCLA. That was our third declaration of the afternoon. We have six left. Go ahead and smile with him, Bruin fans. He's coming to UCLA soon. Inside the Alamo Dome, and just moments ago, Dwight Williams, linebacker from Sarah High School just outside of Los Angeles, let us all know that he will be a UCLA Bruin. Three declarations down. We have six more to go. We also have a new quarterback, Gerard Hurd, in for the west side. Gerard dancing around the right side. And he's run out of bounds, and uh, it's an interesting week for Gerard Hurd. He committed to Texas after his sophomore season, went on to lead his high school team in Denton, Texas, that's Geyer High School, to back-to-back -back state championship teams. But now that Mack Brown is out, and uh, a lot of speculation, Charlie Strong is going to be the guy. He has uh, opened it back up. He's going to wait and see what the next Texas coach is like before he commits to Texas for sure. Number 17, that's Solomon Thomas, defensive lineman out of Coppell, Texas. Earlier, I said he was on his way to Ohio State. That's not correct. He has changed his mind. He's opened it back up. He's going to visit Stanford. I know Arkansas has a real chance to land him as well. So Solomon Thomas, talented young man, quality young man, not on his way to Ohio State. Could end up a Buckeye, but the bottom line, it's still open for Solomon. And he was one of the most impressive kids I spoke with all week. I mean, he, he talks like he's already a junior in college or a rookie in the NFL. He's one of the kids that really sees the big picture, which is a big reason why Stanford is one of the schools on his list. Drew Barker remains the quarterback for the west side. Set, go! And that's Royce Freeman. Awarded the top player in San Diego this past fall. He scores the first touchdown. Freeman will be an Oregon Duck this next fall. And you see why, because he can bring the thunder into the backfield that Oregon hasn't had as much in recent years. Known as a dual threat guy, but he weighs 225 pounds, so that first threat he can bring is power. He got hit there by Nick Ruffin at about the three and a half yard line and was <laughs> able to power through, and I like the presence of mind to reach the ball over the goal line like that. Clayton Hatfield up and in to make it seven to nothing. West side. Royce Freeman awarded the Silver Pigskin Award as the outstanding player in San Diego this fall. Scored 41 touchdowns there. Has one touchdown today. Eric Smith out of Cleveland. Where is he going to play his college football? His declaration is next here inside the Alamo Dome. Still alive, baby. All day. young man right there out of Glenville High School in Cleveland, Eric Smith. For more, here's Marty Snyder. And Paul, he is the first half of the Glenville High School out of Cleveland. Defensive backfield players that will declare today. You cannot question his speed. 4-4 in the 40. Also his classroom work. 3-0 in the classroom for the GPA as well. Dad Curtis is here and happy to have Ted Ginn Sr. here. He's been a coach a long time at uh, the high school. So we're down to these schools. We've got Georgia Tech, Kentucky, Michigan, Ohio State, and Alabama. Eric, who's it going to be? Uh, first off, I want to thank God for blessing me with the talent just to be here. And uh, coaching staff, Coach Ginn, Coach Shin, 
uh, Drews, Petty, and my father because they supported me through everything. And I'll further my education at the University of Ohio State. Ohio State and a lot of guys over here from your team are cheering that that are Buckeyes currently. Eric, you almost didn't declare this week. Why did you decide and what was the hesitation? This, me and Marshawn talk. You know, that's my guy, man. We always had a dream of playing together. Man. Better to do it at home than anywhere else. Well, we'll see if Marshawn declares for Ohio State later on. Paul, a huge pickup for Urban Meyer, who needs a little good news after last night, right? I would say so. Not just last night, but watching the Buckeye defense against Michigan and against Michigan State. A lot of talent there, but also a chance to play right away. Well, he will, and that's because defensively, they really struggled. You heard Urban Meyer after the game last night say, we are not a top-10 defense. That's what we expect to have at Ohio State, and that's now the ninth guy playing in today's game that will be a future Buckeye. Miles Autry bringing it up, going down at the 16-yard line. Nice special teams there. Play by Nathan Starks, running back out of just outside of Denver. Eric Smith made a bunch of plays on offense for Glenville, but he's probably going to play defense at Ohio State. You see there, able to get the ball and run down the sideline. I like his physicality. I mean, taking on a block right there and still making the play, that is not easy for a high school cornerback to do. You've already seen his physicality at times during the game today. Let's think about how suffocating that defense must have been with Eric Smith and Marshawn Lattimore on the back end. And both guys, you're referencing Smith being an offensive player. Lattimore, big two-way target as well. Quarterback for the East, Scott, East side is Jacob Park. And with a gain of five, that's the future Bulldogs, Sony Michelle. Let's check in with Barton on the sideline. We'll talk about a pipeline program. We talked about it a lot today, but Cleveland Glenville has sent a player to Ohio State, at least one, every year since 2002. That was Troy Smith in 2002. Uh, so this is a strong pipeline program that had a lot of success there. Eric Smith, I think, could actually play cornerback, played a lot of cornerback this week, has that kind of ability, and this commitment keeps Ohio State at that number two spot in the 24-7 Sports National Rankings. And one of the future Buckeyes uh, in this game playing wide out to the far left of Park, number four is Johnny Dixon. Has his first completion, and it is to Johnny Dixon. What an unbelievable get Dixon was for Urban Meyer in Ohio State. I mean, he's down there in West Palm Beach at Dwyer High School, absolutely lit up national power St. Thomas Aquinas in the postseason, which is how Dwyer was able to get to the state championship game and win it down in Florida. But that says a lot for Urban Meyer and that Ohio State staff to get a guy like Dwyer from West Palm Beach to go up to Columbus. Who selected Ohio State over Alabama and Miami and ever since his visit to Columbus in November been carrying around Ready. a punk guy in his pocket. So no, no real surprise that he liked at Ohio State. Jacob Park kept it himself. And down he goes. In to make the tackle. Sione to Hema. Sione going to play his college football at Texas. It's been a big effort early in this game from Sione to him. I mean, he's only about 215 pounds. He's played some outside linebacker. He's played defensive end at his program. And in a similar mold of Gerard Hurd, who was in at quarterback earlier in the game, now that the coaching situation was in flux with Charlie Strong rumored to be getting the job for Texas, what does that mean for some of these Longhorns recruits? Tennessee also has four future volunteers playing in this game. They Ready. had an excellent recruiting class. Number 88 to the right is Josh Malone. Jacob Park looking in the direction of Johnny Dixon. Nice job of avoiding pressure. But that falls incomplete. Park has a very strong arm. I find him to be about as interesting of a recruit as we have in the game. Here's a guy from South Carolina that was not offered by either Clemson or the Gamecocks, yet Alabama and Georgia won. And he chose Mark Richt and the chance to follow in Aaron Murray's footsteps over Alabama. But he's got a big arm. You know, really didn't realize how talented he was until recently. Wasn't even planning to play college football until he burst on the scene last summer in a major way. His process evolved to Georgia. Auburn was the early favorite, then he switched to Virginia Tech for a while. Delay of game, offense, 
five yards from the previous spot. Repeat the down. But once he got the offers from Alabama and Georgia, it became a two-horse race. And he actually went to Athens two summers ago, went to camp for Mark Richt and wanted that offer, thought he was going to get it. It didn't come. So he waited a year, went back to camp. At that camp, Mark Rick offered him a scholarship, and less than a week later, he said, yes, I will be a Georgia Bulldog. We kick, we're running this ball in. We kick. Hey! Running, balls in? running back to his right will be there with him. That's Nick Chubb. Clark steps up. And misfires, overshooting Miles Autry. Coverage there provided by Clifton Garrett, the linebacker out of Plainfield South High School. He remains undecided, but he's the number one linebacker in the nation. Also, according to 24-7 Sports, the number one overall player in the state of Illinois. Back to punt for the east side. That's Corbin Daly. He'll play at Texas. Texas played right inside this building less than a week ago. Final game for Mac Brown in a loss to Oregon in the Alamo Bowl. Delay of game. Offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat, fourth down. So the seven points you see on the board for the west side provided by the all-time leading rusher in the city of San Diego. Punching it in was Royce Freeman earlier in the second quarter. Royce going to lead the state of California, though, and play his college football for the Oregon Ducks. 7-13 left until halftime, and we have a 7 to nothing game. And that's K.D. Cannon, who will play wide receiver for the Baylor Bears for the next four years. Declarations, big part of this game. The Ohio State Buckeyes, also a big part of this game. Eric Smith, smiling, smiling. He'll go from Cleveland to Columbus in the fall. The Ohio State University. Oh, hey, all right. Oh, Make a smile like a woman. <laughs> In the field and the hospital, First Lieutenant Rudy Garza blends two worlds to serve patients and save lives. I'm an officer for United States Army Reserve. I'm also an uh, elite uh, CT technologist. It really is fun being able to coordinate care between various departments. You want to make sure that everything's running smoothly for the team and, and most importantly for the patient. Members of the United States Army Reserve are easily identifiable. We have a work ethic that is unmatched. It's going to be hard to find another hospital administrator with the type of experience that I've had. It is the U.S. Army All-American Bowl for a reason. We always enjoy our interaction with members of the Army staff throughout the lead-up to kickoff here. Quarterback Drew Barker on his way to Kentucky. Set, go! Drew flips it out wide for a gain of three. Boy, it didn't take long for Eric Smith to get back out on the field and make a tackle, did it? I mean, he was just telling us he's going to Ohio State. Now he's right back out there making a tackle. And you have to love it. I think a lot of times the corners at the high school level are able to cover, but it's tackling where they're going to have to excel at the next level. Looks like Eric Smith already does. And Drew keeps it himself. And he was a dual threat. High school quarterback just outside of Cincinnati, only the second quarterback in the high school history in Kentucky to have over 50 touchdown passes and also 50 rushing touchdowns. That element of Barker's game that we just saw, it's part of the evolution of college football over the past decade. Ross, you were talking about corners outside tackling. College football is now played outside the hashes, threatening the numbers. You don't see things attacking the middle as often as you used to in conferences like the Big Ten and the Southeastern Conference. We've seen with the addition of Missouri and Texas A&M to the SEC, now even that conference has gone to more spread looks. Third down and three out of the backfield. This is Christian McCaffrey. Before he plays at Stanford, we're all looking forward to watching him play here today. First down, West team. He said he thinks Stanford will use him as a freshman like De'Anthony Thomas was used at Oregon. That's a pretty good indication of that. It's funny, we asked him, I said, you know, Christian, your brother, your dad, Ed, they're both 6'4", 6'5". What happened to the height? He said, no, nah, it's okay. I got the speed and the good looks. <laughs> they, they, they can have the height. I'll take the speed and the good looks. 
I added humility as soon as he said that. Yes, he yes, yes. Like, yeah, I, I left that one out. Drew Barker's with pocket to step into. And that is a first down. West team inside the five-yard line. KD Cannon. You've got Josh Gordon, number one receiver in the NFL out of Baylor. You can understand why talented wideouts want to go to Waco. You also understand why a number of schools are still trying to see if they can recruit KD Cannon and get him away from the Baylor Bears because we know what Baylor's done on the offensive side of the football, turning into one of the preeminent scoring teams in FBS football. And KD Cannon is just going to be in the next line of receiving threat. You also have Josh Gordon, who I mentioned, number one of the NFL receiving yards to go along with Terrence Williams with the Cowboys, and that's another touchdown for the West team. Joe Mixon, number one all-purpose back in the nation. They'll tell us where he's going to college later in the show. Right now, he's celebrating a touchdown. Making his way over to the military here in attendance because this was a militaristic run. He put all kinds of thump right there with destruction on his mind at the goal line. Joe Mixon going to pick between Wisconsin, UCLA, and Oklahoma coming up a little bit later in the game. Clayton Hatfield, two for two extra points. And the West running backs finding the end zone. First, it's Royce Freeman and now Joe Mixon, both from the state of California. Joe about to let us know here if he's going to stay in California to play his college football. Two rushing touchdowns for the West team, and it's 14 to nothing inside the Alamo Dome. We saw Joe Mixon score the second touchdown of the day for the West team. Right now he's on the sideline with our Lewis Johnson. And I don't know if anybody's having more fun at this game than Joe Mixon. You've got a big smile on your face, but let's go back and look at the screen plays earlier. And ultimately you led to the touchdown here inside the Alamo Dome. What are you seeing as you get the ball and, and begin to scan the field and, and make your way down the field? Well, pretty much, you know, started in practice. And, but, you know, right here, you know, I just read my blocker, got the catch, you know, did the mechanics. You know, after this, you just have to finish the run, make the cut, you know, just finish throwing. All right, now take us to the touchdown. Well, the touchdown, you know, I just ran my block. You know, Damian Mama told me to follow him. You know, I got right behind him, and he led me to score. And, and you weren't done, were you? Oh, no, nah, never. Can't be done. Let me too. <laughs> How great is it to spend some time here and give these guys, these soldiers, some uh, some cheer as well? Well, it means a lot, because, you know, they fight, they fight their lives off every day for us. And, you know, all I came to do out here, you know, was to put on for Oakland, California, Freedom High. You know, my coach's family back home. And, you know, basically put on for the soldiers. All right, Joe, great stuff. Back to the game, huh? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and, Lewis, he's going to let us know a little bit later in the game if he's going to take those talents from Freedom High to Westwood, to Norman, or to Madison. His declaration is coming up. This is Sony Michelle. We know he'll be a tailback at the University of Georgia. And he's brought down to the 26-yard line. Michelle's really a great story bouncing back from a torn ACL in 10th grade. You know, a lot of times that can ruin a uh, recruit's prospects, but he'd already done so much in 8th and ninth grade that he was already a top prospect. Came back as a junior and had a decent year, but not as good as his freshman and sophomore years. It took him all the way till this season to get back to his 8th and ninth grade form. I can't even believe I'm saying that, by the way. 8th and ninth grade form. 8th uh, grade... Caleb Henderson is the new quarterback. Sony Michelle is the tailback. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, repeat first down. For more on Sony Michelle, here's our own Marty Snyder. Well, of course, going to Georgia to play a little football, but his music career is what he loves to do in his off time. He's been rapping for three years. He's become quite popular. He's actually had a few paying gigs to go play at schools and a couple of different things. And he's got some videos on YouTube as well. He calls himself Two Stacks with a Z. I asked him what that meant. He says, because I want to get 2,000 yards in one season, and he gets a pass right there. He said, I want to rush for 2,000 yards in one season. But football is certainly more important to me, and he's doing all of that while carrying a 3.85 GPA. That's pretty impressive, and he's almost as busy as you are, Paul. <laughs> well, he had a hard time getting back to the line of scrimmage there, but uh, what an unbelievable high school career. Eighth and ninth grade, sat out 10th with a torn ACL, then his junior and senior year. Over 6,600 career rushing yards and also 81 touchdowns. Yeah. 
and his his head coach Mike Rump is actually here and he's one of the coaches on the secondary for the E squad. of the year in this game 90 to be exact and there are the the players who have won the award of Gatorade player of the year and Sony Michelle out of Florida the man we've been talking about and as you would imagine he had offers from Miami from Florida State also from Florida actually admitted that he grew up a diehard Canes fan but just something felt right about going to Georgia We've got a great atmosphere there in Athens under Mark Rick and the level of talent we touched on it earlier. Players haven't been afraid to go there and continue to compete, wanting to get that playing time because they do a great job spreading the football around, especially at the running back position, getting folks a lot of carries. Caleb Henderson wants to throw it for the first time under all kinds of pressure in the backfield and finally brought down by Kenny Young linebacker out of Curtis High School in River Ridge Louisiana Kenny Young still uncommitted at this point in his high school career it wasn't quite as uncommon a thing to be uncommitted yet at this point a few years ago but now you see so many players making early commitments but Kenny Young wanting to make sure that he knows he's going to the right school making the right choice and able to bring down a big solid quarterback in Caleb Henderson I believe Henderson out of all the quarterbacks in this game specifically with arm talent Caleb Henderson I believe has the strongest most talented passing on gonna have to get this one off just does this is the final play of the first half and a big hit delivered number 17 Solomon Thomas again uh, it's still open to find out where he's going gonna visit Stanford and Ohio State also Arkansas definitely in the mix for Solomon Thomas our score at halftime 14 to nothing at the west side touchdown for Royce Freeman and also one touchdown for Mr. Dixon, the top running back, the top all-purpose running back, is Joe Mixon in the nation. Coming up at halftime, we'll go to New York and our own Tony Dungy, Rodney Harrison, going to look ahead to the wild card weekend and break down a couple of former players in this game. That's Andrew Luck and Jamal Charles. Dan Patrick will be there as well. We'll be back for the third quarter. At halftime at the Alamo Dome, it's 14 to nothing, West team. Welcome back inside the Alamo Dome here just outside of downtown San Antonio. The 15th annual U.S. Army All-American Bowl. Pair of rushing touchdowns for the West Side. And some very good defense, and they lead 14 to nothing. Welcome back to the broadcast booth. I'm Paul Burmeister alongside Anthony Heron and also Ross Tucker. Top of the broadcast, we talk about the number one ranked quarterback in the nation. That's Kyle Allen, who plays college football at Texas A&M. And he hasn't disappointed so far. He really hasn't. And it's not just about, as we talked about, the tangible with Kyle Allen because he can hit every blade of grass with the throws. He can also maneuver the pocket with his feet. We've seen him leave the pocket, flip those shoulders, hit targets down the field like KD can, and be able to locate the football away from defenders. So the accuracy is most certainly there. But it's the moxie that you really got to love about Kyle Allen and all the different players that are in this game competing on this stage, Ross. Yeah, I mean, so far, he's clearly been the quarterback that's been in the most control and been the most productive. There's a reason why he's the number one ranked pro style quarterback in the country what a great get for Texas A&M yeah. right on the heels of having Johnny football unbelievable and the reason this is always a, a great three hours for us the talent on the field like Kyle Allen yes it's always fun to see but we also have the intrigue of the declarations throughout the game we've already had a handful and we're looking forward to a number of others and uh, who are you most looking forward to we have five left uh, here and where or which campus he's heading to I'm excited to hear Bryce Dixon because the tight end position at the collegiate level, at the next level in the pros has turned into that hybrid spot that you get so much out of them. Inline blockers, H-backs, slot receivers. So Bryce Dixon, I think, is a guy I'm excited to see. Well, for me, it's Joe Mixon. I mean, we've already seen his talents on display out there today. The number one ranked all-purpose back in the country. He reminds me a little bit of Adrian Peterson. He's number 28. Really impressive. Football declarations. Five more left to come in the second half. Marty Snyder on the sideline right now thinking about an ROTC declaration. And, Paul, it is time for the U.S. Army All-American Bowl ROTC Scholarship presentation. Colin Campbell from right here in San Antonio is going to pick where he's going to go to school from Alabama, Colorado, and Oregon. Then Major General Jeffrey Smith will present a check for a scholarship worth up to $150,000. Mom, Lori's sisters are here as well. Colin, which school are you going to go to? I'm going to go to Boulder. 
Colorado. Going to go to Boulder, Colorado, and at Colorado, he's going to study civil engineering. Major General Smith, you can present him with a check for $150,000. He gets to go to school for free, Paul. It's not, not a bad thing. <laughs> It is a good idea for anybody, and anybody who's been to Boulder knows it's uh, not a bad idea to spend four years in Boulder also. Beautiful inside the Alamo Dome. That is Kyle Allen, the number one ranked quarterback, not only in this game, but in the nation. He'll play his college ball at Texas A&M. For Kyle, being selected to the U.S. Army All-American Bowl is the realization of a dream and the product of endless hours of hard work and dedication. But none of that would be possible without his family, his coaches, and his friends who serve to protect his dream along the way. I just love the competition of football. Put a lot of team effort into it, and that's what I like is a team camaraderie. I think Kyle right now wants to play in the NFL, and that's a dream he wants to try and fulfill. I help protect Kyle's dream by making sure that he's got what he needs. We just kind of remind him who he is. To protect my dream is just focusing on one thing at a time and trying not to get too in over my head on what's going to come in the future. Just kind of focus on the present. And Kyle, ready to go back in this game in just a moment. But the first half, you were, had a hot start. What were you seeing early that helped you play so well? Uh, defense is playing really conservative on their side. They were playing off. They were giving us the short stuff. So we just took what they gave us, and we just clunked down the field like you saw in our long drive. We started on the nine, went all the way down the field, and we came up short, but we were just driving hard. I mean, it's, they're playing conservative. They adjusted a little later when I wasn't in. They started pressing, but they're giving us what we want. Speaking of adjustments, how much X to the nose talk is going on at halftime of an all-star game like this? You know, there's not much. You practice all week. You know what you're supposed to do. Stick to the plan. You know, not much. And we're up 14-0. So, little adjustments and stuff, but we're doing fine. All right, Kyle. Thanks. Thank you. Paul, here we go again. Kyle started hot in this game. Eight out of eight for 88 yards, but then cooled down a bit. Since then, he is just one out of five. Number 32 for the west side. Back deep to receive the kickoff. Buda Baker, one of the best all-around athletes in this game. To many, he's the top recruit in the state of Washington, but he will play his college football at Oregon. And here's Baker looking for a crease to show off that speed. And he gets out to the 37-yard line. Let's check in again on the sideline with Marty Snyder. Well, Wilger had some time in the uh, locker room to kind of think about what's going on with the offense. How do you guys kickstart your offense here a little bit? Well, I think that, uh, you know, in these games it's hard to get a rhythm, and uh, we don't have a lot of chemistry. We only had a week together, but, you know, I think we saw a lot this first half, and we made some adjustments, and I think we'll be good to go to the second half. I know it's an all-star game, but it's it's not fun to trail, is it? You want to get back in it, don't you? Yeah, yes, sir. We'll be right back in it. There's no, there's no worry. We'll be, we'll be out here in... Uh, we made some adjustments, like I said, and we'll be fine. Well, he promises the adjustments will pay off and the East will get back in this game. You know, he's certainly used to success, threw for over 14,000 yards in his high school career. And that's Gerard Hurd, committed to the University of Texas after his sophomore season, went on to lead his high school team, Denton Geyer High, to a pair of back-to-back -back titles. However, he told us yesterday he's he's open to thinking about his college decision now. Now that Mac Brown has left, we'll see if it is indeed Charlie Strong. But uh, just in case he doesn't like the system, he's thinking about Boise State. He's also thinking Nebraska or maybe even UCLA. Going to UT and becoming a Longhorn, if you're one of the top players in Texas, it almost feels like a birthright to a certain extent because those guys have grown up with that Texas program, especially these kids being born in the mid-90s. They've grown up with Texas being the preeminent program in that part of the country. Yeah, and I asked him, what, what was that like? You know, you're a junior in high school and you're already committed to Texas. You're walking the halls in Denton, Texas. You're already a legend in your high school. He said, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I bet it was. <laughs> Showed off his uh, dual threat athlete athleticism and efficiency in the state championship game against San Antonio Brennan. He rushed 23 times for a buck 46. Also a perfect nine out of nine passing in the state title win. Heard on third down and nine firing into coverage and that falls incomplete. And that is Nick Ruffin. He has been really, really impressive. Take a look, Hurd fakes the read, and then he's going to throw it down the field. You'll see number 13, Nick Ruffin, come in, get his right hand on the football. Ruffin's probably been as impressive a defensive back as there been on the E squad. Really has a good head on his shoulders. His brother, Aaron, played at Brown, and he's got some military background as well. His dad, Demetrius, an E5 staff sergeant who retired. West side with a 14-point lead. Led by touchdown runs by Royce Freeman and also Joe Mixon. A little confusion right now. And 
they call timeout. It'll be declaration time when we come back. Frank, I had it show. How do you like this ratio? 44 catches his senior season, 16 went for touchdowns. Where's he going to college? He is about to let you know. I'm Kyle Allen. I'm committed to Texas a and I'm Jalen Brown. I'm committed to the University of Oregon. Hi, my name is Bryson Allen Williams, and I'm committed to the University of South Carolina. My name is Terrell Cuny. I'm committed to Texas. But it shows that the Army has a lot of different vocations you can go to that help become a well-rounded individual, not only about being a soldier. Third quarter just underway here inside the Alamo Dome. The West team failed to move the ball with its first possession. And putting away, this is Chris Lamix. He's got some room around the left side. Well down at the 18-yard line. Time for another declaration. Our Lewis Johnson has you covered there. All right, thanks very much. Frank Ihanacho here has a huge crowd, family coaches here ready to support this young man. Predominantly known as a basketball player, but came back to the game of football as a senior without one scholarship offer. But as the season ended after 17 touchdowns, multiple offers now whittled down to three. And so, Frank, everybody wants to know, is it going to be Oregon, LSU, or Texas A&M? Look at Mom with that big smile. <laughs> Here's the moment. I mean, all these all these programs are great programs. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm just glad they took the time to notice me throughout this year. So, <laughs> my decision I was going to come down to Texas A&M. Oh, the Aggies of A&M, and that gets a big reaction. Why A&M, Frank? I mean, uh, I just felt like A&M was a home from once I came down there. You know, uh, it was a great support group, and I'm just glad to be down there and be a family. There's no question you've made your mom happy. Let me ask your brother, Davis. He's only going to be about an hour and a half away from home. How big is that for family? It's a real big thing. It's a good thing that, uh, to know he, he's not that far away from home. And uh, but my mom can always just make a trip like an hour and a half away to get to his game. So that's a real good thing. All right. So the family affair will continue. Congratulations. Good luck there. Thank you. Paul? All right, Lewis, in one week's time, Texas A&M loses a six foot five wide receiver, Mike Evans, to the NFL draft, but they gain six foot six Frank Ihanicho. It's a decent trade. <laughs> one that Kevin Sumlin sure hopes works out. Quarterback for the East team is Caleb Henderson, and the running back, Nick Chubb, who's on his way to Georgia. The skill set that Frank Ihanacho brings to the table is the ability to locate and make the play on the jump ball. We talked about his basketball background. He played more hoops than he did football at his high school. But the thing he can do is he's transitioned quickly into a football player. And we saw with Lewis Johnson down there, the community that's been around Frank Ihanacho to help him quickly become one of the top recruits in the country. His coaches were able to help him out as well. Well, and he already weighs 220 pounds as mainly a basketball player. So you look at him and he might be able to fill out who knows and become a, a Jimmy Graham type tight end at some point as well the way football's trending Caleb Henderson stepping up there on third down and eight not quite enough for a first down for more on Frank Ihanicho and his decision to attend Texas A&M here's Barton Simmons well, the jump ball lives on at College Station, guys. I mean, Mike Evans takes off for the NFL. Uh, Frank Iamacho steps in. Same frame, 6'5", 6'6". He's got a 6'11 wingspan. So that really gives you a big catch radius if you're a quarterback. He may redshirt, add some weight just like Mike Evans did. But you add him to a kid like Speedy Noel, who Texas A&M got earlier this week, a five-star wide receiver. That's a great combo for Kyle Allen to throw to in the future. Kyle Allen going to perform at Cal Field. See how many times he can find Frank Ohanicho. Christian McCaffrey on his way to Stanford. The impressive return just inside the 40-yard line. Going to play running back and uh, slash a little bit of slot. Thinks they're going to use him at Stanford just like Oregon uses DeAnthony Thomas. Frank Ohanicho, nice to have it over with. He is on his way to College Station to catch passes as an Aggie. We're back inside the Alamo Dome after this. All right. All right. My name is Zach Whitley, and I'm committed to Alabama. My name is Joshua Frazier, and I'm committed to Alabama. I'm Sean Hamilton. I'm committed to Alabama. Yo, Bama. Roll, Roll Tide. Will Greer going to see that side four times as a Florida Gator. Quarterback from North Carolina headed to Gainesville. Over the years, Football University has trained and coached 29 Army All-Americans, including Will Greer. During Bowl Week, coaches like former NFL quarterback Jeff Rutledge spent time working with these athletes to develop their technique, as well as to ensure success on the field. 
Football University trains the top football players in America. As the game has changed, safety is more important. The elite training is technique-based, which is a difference maker in an athlete's career. Will Greer, I'm sure, benefiting from the time spent there. I believe Jeff Rutledge, uh, former Alabama quarterback. Probably didn't hold it against the uh, athletes going elsewhere in the SEC. Happy to develop these young student-athletes to be. 7.47 left in the 15th annual U.S. Army All-American Bowl. Will on the sideline watching the quarterback for the other side. For the West team, it's Gerard Hurd, who for the time being is committed to the University of Texas. Well, on the left side, and there you see the speed and a first down for the West side. Ran for 146 yards in the state championship game two weeks ago. Picks up 13 right there. And I'll be very curious to see whether or not he sticks with his Texas commitment if the reports of Charlie Strong heading from Louisville to Texas are accurate. Obviously, they didn't run the ball very much at the quarterback position in Louisville with Teddy Bridgewater the last three years, although I'm sure Coach Strong is smart enough to adapt his offense to herd skill set. And Gerard saying uh, he's keeping in the back of his mind UCLA, Nebraska, and Boise State if he doesn't like the fit at Texas. And I'm sure he didn't like that play there. Sacks and dropped by Dante Sawyer, who played his college football for Steve Spurrier in South Carolina. This is the second time we've seen Sawyer. Here he locks out just an inside move by Sawyer. That's the second impressive sack by Sawyer in this game. The first time was speed around the edge. That time, extending those long arms and winning inside. He might be filling in for Jadavion Clowney. <laughs> and Ross, you can speak to this, the difficulty of offensive linemen in a week like this, because we've seen the offensive lines on both sides, I think, struggle a little bit with pass rush games, with speed from the other defensive front. Seems like the defense has gotten in the mode quickly. Gerard Hurd likes this running around the left side. Texas Longhorns, you like what you're seeing right there. Nearly 4,000 rushing yards over the last two years of the high school career of Gerard Hurd. And the thing is, he's faster with the football in his hands than he is without. He only times around a 4, 5, 40, but you've got that football speed. And there's no doubt when you watch this film and the long stride of the QB out of Texas that Gerard Hurd has that football speed. Yeah, he almost stepped out of bounds, did a good job staying in bounds. And what impresses me is he was just outrunning some legit athletes right there. I mean, that is big-time speed when you're outrunning these guys. Hands it off to Royce Freeman, who will be running for Oregon the next four years inside the five-yard line. Down to the three. Royce already with one touchdown this afternoon. That time he picks up four. As the adjustment gets made from the high school level to the collegiate level, especially when you're talking about going to Oregon, a running back like Royce Freeman will have to make that transition where he's going to go and have to press the hole, run between the A gaps, between the B gaps, because he's not always going to be able to outrun people around the corner. Royce Freeman decided to leave Southern California from San Diego. He's going to go to Eugene. Our next declaration will find out if Bryce Dixon is going to stay in Los Angeles. So we know he's going to stay <laughs> if he's going to be a Bruin or if he's going to be a Trojan. Gerard Hurd picks up one down just inside the one-yard line. Another tackle by Eric Smith. Eric Smith has to be one of the leading tacklers in this game. You've got to do that in the Big Ten, right? If you're a defensive back, you know there's going to be a number of teams that still run the football, that still bring power at you. Some spread option coming more in the vogue within that conference, but Eric Smith is going to have to be a guy who can come up and force the edge. We've seen today that he's certainly got that ability. He announced his intention to play at Ohio State University next fall. The Buckeyes have eight players on the field today. And the West team has its third touchdown of the afternoon. Two for Royce Freeman. This offensive line, as much as they've struggled in pass protection, the road graders, you see the pad level up front. I mean, I pointed out Jared Dalton a little while ago when he struggled in pass protection a little bit, but look at the way number 72 for the West comes off the ball at the offensive tackle position. That allows the running lane for Royce Freeman to get into the paint. Easy to understand why a running back, one of the top backs in the country, would want to play at Oregon. Number one rushing offense in the Pac-12, top 10 in the nation. Also individually, the running backs getting drafted here recently. Kenyon Barner, well, Michael James, LeGarrette Blunt, the reigning AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Morris Freeman hopes he is next in line in Eugene. 
Up next here inside the Alamo Dome, another declaration. Bryce Dixon. We know he's not going far. Is he going to be a Trojan or a Bruin? He's about to let you know. Here's what we found out with the declaration so far. Wallace heading to Arkansas. And a wide receiver to be at Virginia. That's Jamil Kamara from Virginia Beach to Charlottesville. And Dwight Williams from Sarah High School just outside of Los Angeles. Going to play for UCLA. The Buckeyes have eight future Ohio State players after Eric Smith said he is going to Columbus. And Frank I had a show Going to catch passes for Texas A&M. Marty Snyder has the next declaration with Bryce Dixon. And, Paul, this is the one that Anthony Heron has been waiting on, the number two tight end in the country. Bryce Dixon is going to decide where he's going to go between UCLA, Miami, and USC. Coach Adam Martin here to support him as well. Where's it going to be? Well, I'll be getting my degree and playing college ball at the University of Southern California. Southern California, and that's a bit of a surprise. Learns of Bucker, his cousin, played at Florida State. He also played in the NFL. So give us some behind the scenes of what went into this decision because as of yesterday, you were still undecided. Well, um, thinking about it, USC has a good tradition of good tight ends, and then bringing Coach Sark in would be a great addition, and I think I could keep the tradition on as good tight ends. You like the decision, Coach? Any decision for him is a good one. I support anything he does. He's a good kid. All right, going to Southern California, Paul. Uh, Marty, it has been back and forth between the Bruins and Trojans. And uh, instead of going to, to Westwood, going to play for USC. Living in Los Angeles, it's been interesting to watch it ebb and flow. I mean, USC was getting its pick of the very best players in Southern California uh, for quite some time. And UCLA not only crawled back into the mix, if you look at it, UCLA winning more often than losing these days. This is Miles Autry. Miles just past the 20 yard line. Bryce Dixon is every bit of six foot four. Right now, he's in that 215, 220 pound range. He's actually lost 40 pounds since his junior year. He was 260 earlier in his career, but we see the fluidity that he runs pass routes with. He's one of these guys who's basically a wide receiver in a tight end's body, and he can make circus catches any way you want him to outside of his cage, one handed, two handed, diving outside his frame. It's really impressive to watch the growth and development that he's had, not only as an athlete, but as a more physical football player, a guy who's probably going to be in that H-back H -back slot sort of role, but he can emerge as being more of an inline blocker. Future Tar Heel, Elijah Hood trying to turn the corner. Impressive job of doing so. Out to the 27-yard line. That is a gain of six. Let's check in with Martin Simmons to tell us what this new commitment means for USC. Well, it's only the 15th commitment for USC in this class as they still deal with some scholarship limitations right now. But it's big for USC because it's a big momentum build builder, beat UCLA in it. But watch out for the Bruins heading down the home stretch. Uh, again, he's going to visit both schools officially in January. So they still have a fight on their hand. Does see Steve Sarkeesian, uh, but he's a good one. Really like that NFL background for USC. Jacob Park now in at quarterback out of Stratford High School, Goose Creek, South Carolina. He'll play at Georgia. And that's incomplete. Looking for Tamari Kitts, a wide receiver, one of two wide receivers out here today. Going to play college football at Clemson. And I think you could hear Damon Webb say, too quick, the corner out of Detroit, Michigan, Cass Tech High School. He's actually another Buckeye. Talk about a, a, a spoil of riches there for Ohio State in terms of the defensive backs, and we'll still see where Marshawn Lattimore is going later in the game, but they tried to run the wide receiver screen on him, and he beat Nick Wisher, the future Notre Dame tight end who was trying to block him to the punch. We are rotating quarterbacks, or we should right. say the East team rotating quarterbacks right. on this drive. Here's Will Greer back in the game. Keeps it himself uh, around the left side. Will can run it a little bit, but what he really does well is pass it. State title game, 599 yards passing and seven touchdowns. He was a little off his game because he's been known to go over 800 what, that, yards. That was the whole postseason? or That was one single game. <laughs> you have numbers like that when you're junior and senior year. You're over 10,000 total. Good grief. 
Well, what, and what I like about the game where he had over 800 yards, Paul, that we were talking about earlier, is the final score was 104 to 80. So it's, <laughs> it's not like they were running the score up. Like they needed all those yards. They needed him to stay in the game and keep throwing. Otherwise, they might have lost. That's a good thing. His defense yeah. came to play on that day, holding yeah. the opponent to only 80 points. Jacob Park misfires. And the rotating at quarterbacks uh, doesn't work for the East team as they still look for the very first points. We're looking for more declarations. Bryce Dixon is happy because he just told us he is going to be a USC Trojan. This is a lot of Freeman Jones. Caleb Patterson. Elijah Hood. Billy Spain. Go, Go Hills! Yeah! <laughs> I went too early. <laughs> Now at heart, fast and physical, and you're only doing fast and physical. <laughs> <laughs> it's no accident that linebacker Zach Whitley has achieved so much in his life with mentors like Staff Sergeant Robert Statham, a broadcast journalist in the U.S. Army Reserve in his corner. So you surprised to see me? Yeah, suited up. I mean, that surprised me that they teach stuff like this day that you can just be a cameraman. Yeah, the Army has all kinds of cool opportunities. I've been all over the world. They teach you some really really cool stuff. And I really appreciate that. If I didn't have football, I would come to the Army. And the best thing in the world is to represent this right here, the U.S. Army. And Zach Whitley had a change of heart last night. Decommitted from Alabama. Going to play college football at UCLA. Which I think, Paul, brings up a really good point, which is that nothing is official until these guys sign a letter of intent <laughs> on the dotted line the first yeah. Wednesday in February. I mean, there, there's still about a month to go. And there could be more guys like Whitley that change their mind. That's what's turned into a huge part of the recruiting game now is that you have to stay after these athletes even after they commit. Kyle Allen going to Texas A&M and looking toward the end zone. It's out of bounds. His intended receiver is actually his running back, Christian McCaffrey. Father Ed was a great receiver at Stanford. He'll also go to Stanford. See if he can have the type of career his dad did. Ed McCaffrey, the uh, solid career if not really good career for the Denver Broncos. It is interesting, just getting back to Whitley for a second with his decommitment from Alabama to UCLA. There are certain programs that you can tell based on this game are on the rise. UCLA, Baylor, Texas A&M. They're getting a lot more players in this game than they used to. Kyle Allen throwing in rhythm that time as the West team picks up a first down. The completion to Bryce Dixon moments ago. He told us he's going to USC. Now he has a first down reception. It's about time they threw the football to him. He's 6'4". He's got a huge wingspan. He's a big-time playmaker. Nice to see the tight end get into the action here, too. Next declaration, uh, we go to the defensive side of the ball. Niles Morgan going to tell you where he's going. That's coming up at the top, at the four, top of the fourth quarter. Going to be between Notre Dame, Vandy, and Ole Miss. Kyle Allen to the end zone. That was a nice throw. And I had a show. Had a shot. And that's really his skill set, delivering that football up top the way Kyle Allen did. And again, pretty accurate pass, throwing it away from the defender where his offensive player is the only one with a shot at it. At six foot six, I had it till went up, tried to run under the football as opposed to maybe turning those shoulders and trying to high point it. And they're going to get a chance to, to perfect that as they're both going to play at Texas A&M. <laughs> a lot of time to work on that route. Uh, go. Second down, 10. Kyle Allen chasing the ball, doesn't get it, still squirting around, and the East squad has it. Future Ohio State Buckeye Jalen Holmes touchdown East team. And as you can see, an injury injured West player on the field. That's the quarterback Kyle Allen now being helped up. And good to see him walking off the field. Another somewhat errant snap. As you mentioned earlier, Ross, that QB center exchange, very difficult to get down in a game like this and be precise with it. It's good to see Kyle Allen walk off, though, and his coach smiling at him. The last thing you want to see in a game like this, obviously, is any sort of injury. I mean, he's reporting to College Station on Tuesday, and he wants to compete in spring ball. He looks like he's okay over there. Also nice to see for the E-Squad. 
that they had an opportunity to get on the board there. Their defensive end, Jalen Holmes, flashing some athleticism out in space. As the play develops, snaps from center. Just slightly off. Allen actually tried to kick it out of bounds. Nice scoop and score opportunity there from Jalen Holmes. Jalen Holmes. Gave it a little high step and what it may have been at, at the collegiate level. We know that the rules state if you start to strut, if you start to high step before you enter the end zone, they will take the touchdown off the board. Yeah, I know, but this is an all-star <laughs> game. I mean, come on. I tell you what, that is one impressive looking guy. Jalen Holmes, his body and the way he's rushed the passer all week, he looks like he can grow into a frame and be a dominant pass rusher for the Buckeyes that they absolutely need. I mean, just based on this game, if, if I'm buying stock in any of these schools, it's Ohio State and Texas A&M. Stock up for those two programs. What a big day for the Buckeyes. And he'll fit right in at Ohio State. They're not lacking for impressive-looking athletes. We told you a little bit early in the broadcast, the quarterback Kyle Allen, we're watching him right now. He had the injury in the last play that he's wearing a microphone. Let's take a listen to... Uh, not only, uh, let's take a look, not only how it looked, but how it listened moments ago, all right? Did Aaron knock on you? I had a knee right in the back. You got an empty, you don't listen to anything like that, are you? Just what? Bruised. feel like it's bruised. You don't yeah. have nothing yeah, to okay. under anything? I'm all right. Okay. Hey, Kyle Allen telling me just a moment ago that he took a knee to the back, says he doesn't believe it's anything serious, and I asked him about going back in the game. He said, we'll see, but you tell by that walk right there, he may try to get back in this game. Hope so. And he's going to Texas A&M next week. He's going to be the center. If indeed Johnny Football does the play for the NFL Draft, one of the major questions is going to be who will replace him. Kyle Allen going to take a shot at doing so right away. Drew Barker, who played college football out of Kentucky, just found a Buckeye there, Johnny Dixon. Dixon has been one of the most impressive receivers all week. Watch the fancy footwork here. Able to get that one foot in before he goes out of bounds. Dixon lit up opposing secondaries in Florida this year, high school football, and he is going from Palm Beach Gardens to Ohio State. So another Buckeye making a play. Musical chair quarterback yeah. continues yeah, yeah, for the E-Squad, yeah, Jacob yeah, Park. Yeah, is the quarterback and getting down near the end zone. Number 21 is Nick Chubb, Georgia Bulldog to be, along with Sony Michelle. will also be with him in Athens, and he was with him in the backfield on that play. This is Nick Chubb territory down here. Earlier in the week when we had the skills challenge, Nick Chubb was the guy that everyone wanted to get involved in the tug of war contest because he got over a 600 pound squat. The Chubb leaves the field. And Drew Barker is back in at quarterback. Play stop once again. We have a timeout called by the West team. Well, the West had too many guys on the field. So they had to call a timeout. Otherwise, they would have gotten a penalty. And the quarterback is actually Will Greer. And we mentioned throughout the broadcast here all the uh, former players in this game you're going to watch on Wild Card Weekend. One of them, All-Pro selection, Jamal Charles. We asked him to recall his experience here in San Antonio. I remember them coming to my school and, and uh, I had a pep rally. I'm the only guy on the football team that was having a pep rally for her. That meant a lot to me. It was a very special moment. I have memories of like, yeah, he played with me in the U.S. Army game, and I still talk about it. You know, you take memories from them times going back from 10 years ago and, and being where you're at now. I mean, that's, that's something special. I'm Jamal Charles. I played in the 2005 U.S. Army All-American game. Watch us take on the coast tonight. And on defense, the, the Chiefs going to have the help from Eric Berry. He played in this game. He'll be facing Andrew Luck. He played in this game. You can watch Chiefs Colts later this afternoon right here on NBC. And right after that one, it's more wild card weekend. We go to the NFC, the Philadelphia to check out the Saints and the Eagles. LaShawn McCoy, big honor earlier this week along with Jamal Charles. LaShawn, uh, an all-pro tailback. He played in this game. And I'm not quite done. Deshaun Jackson, another playmaker on offense. <laughs> if you're a historian of the U.S. Army All-American Bowl, you remember watching Deshaun play on this field as well.
team looking to capitalize on the fumble recovery by Jalen Holmes that brought him this close. Jalen actually made it into the end zone but was a little too excited. His celebration led to a penalty, brought the football back. And now the East looking to score for the first time today. The quarterback there is Jacob Park. More declarations coming up. Niles Morgan, a linebacker. Will he stay in the Midwest or go to Vanderbilt? He's about to let you know. Buckeye, he is Eric Smith, the defensive back. Frank Ihanicho, going to play wide receiver at Texas A&M. Tight end, he'll also catch passes. That's Bryce Dixon going to USC, is the Los Angeles native. We have three more declarations to go, starting out with Niles Morgan. Here's Lewis Johnson. All right, a big linebacker out of Creek Mooney High School in Chicago, Illinois, just outside Chicago, as a matter of fact, here with a lot of family members, mom, dad, auntie, grandmother, everybody came into town for this big moment. And so, Niles, you have been sought after around the country. You've got it down to three hats. And in front of us, we have Vanderbilt, Notre Dame, and Ole Miss. And so after a big day where you've got eight tackles so far, the world awaits your decision. Where will you play your college football? Uh, I mean... First of all, it's been a humbling and blessed experience, you know, um, a great journey. But uh, today is going to end with uh, me committing to University of Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish. Ryan Kelly picking up a big linebacker. How, big, how difficult was the decision for you? It was hard, you know, because uh, I really love both schools that were uh, contending for this. But uh, this came down to what was uh, most important. Right. And how do you think you'll be able to help the Irish defense next year? Uh, they do need a Mike linebacker, so, you know, I'll um, come in and fill that role. All right, you'll be the guy. Yeah. All right. Is family happy about that, coach? Is everybody good? Yeah. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, Paul. And yeah, Niles Morgan going to make the short drive from Chicago land to South Bend. Niles Morgan plays the game with a veracity that teeters on the brink of sheer bedlam. He is a seek-and-destroy linebacker like few other in the country. You see the blitz ability that he has penetrating into the backfield, but he's instinctive. He can locate the football outside the half marks. He can chase it down, and he hits anything that moves. There's a lot of friendly fire on the film of Niles Morgan as well. Friendly fire as in uh, hitting some of his own teammates. <laughs> if they were in the way, he was willing to do it, Paul. All right, the East team looking to start the fourth quarter with its very first touchdown. They trail 21 to nothing. To go. This is Sony Michelle. And there is your East touchdown, scored by the future Georgia Bulldog. Just like Joe Mixon did, you see Michelle throw the ball up into the crowd. I like the fact that he got a block from Elijah Hood. There's no fullbacks in this game, so you'll see number 34, Hood. He'll come out and kick out Dwight Williams. Michelle turned it up right behind the block of big left tackle Quentin Nelson to get the East on the board. And Georgia Bulldog fans know very well what they just saw. They hope to see much more of that the next four years. Jacob Park, the quarterback, who will play in Athens. Handing off to Sony Michelle for a touchdown. Extra point is pushed by Freeman Jones. And it's 21 to 6. So now's Morgan going to play linebacker. He says Mike linebacker for Notre Dame. And Barton, what does that mean for the Irish? Well, it's a big pickup, and it really speaks a lot to what Brian Kelly's been able to do on the recruiting trail. At one point, Vandy led. At one point, Ole Miss led. But Brian Kelly really uh, honed in on Niles Morgan late in the game, uh, really made him a priority and showed that that Notre Dame brand still means something, still sells. No defensive coordinator doesn't matter. Uh, Chuck Martin took off. Brian Kelly still came in and made this kid a priority, and I think he's a kid that can really help that Notre Dame defense. And there are three more future Irish playing in this game and really no surprise no matter what kind of season Notre Dame had like last year they were a step away from the national championship this season took a small step back 
they're always going to recruit well. They're always going to have players on this type of field. Right, and Niles Morgan was one of the more impressive guys we spoke with yesterday. He talked about how important academics were, and he talked about the alumni network, and that was really ultimately what sold him on Notre Dame. But as you can tell, with Vanderbilt being his second choice, the academics were a top priority for Morgan. It's almost an upset in a way because even his cousin, Laquan Fredwell, was the top wide receiver in the country last year. Former teammate at Creek Monee of Niles Morgan. Treadwell is now at Ole Miss, and we know the recruiting job Ole Miss did last year. So there was a lot of rumblings that maybe Niles Morgan would go to Ole Miss, but Notre Dame able to hone in even though they don't have either coordinator on staff right now. And that's because Bob Diaco took the head coaching job. Now you come. Congratulations. Onside kick. And getting his big paws on it, the future Oklahoma Sooner wide receiver, Mark Andrews. First onside kick of the day. East team trying to steal possession if they can. But really not bad execution there. It ball first kicks at about the 10-yard mark. <laughs> a bit of a scramble there, trying to get the recovery. This is definitely not something they've worked on much in practice. Now, you're not allowed to kick an onside kick until the fourth quarter, but I like the fact that East is going for it. Smart move by the West, though, to have Mark Andrews on the second line there, able to secure the football. Future Oklahoma Sooner, Mark Andrews. I guess at this point, former teammate of Kyle Allen, with their high school career being over. And the quarterback on his way to Kentucky, that's Drew Barker. And he was thinking one thing, Frank Ihanicho was thinking another, and the result, an incompletion to bring up second down 10. Drew Barker really the face of Mark Stoops' recruiting effort there as he looks to rebuild the Kentucky Wildcat program. They were winless in the SEC this season. And after the season, Coach Stoops said, you know, nobody at quarterback really stepped up and said, this job is mine. Well, Drew Barker next week going to go to Lexington, about an hour drive from his home just outside of Cincinnati, and try and claim that job. Drew Cullen for his hometown Cincinnati Bengals against the San Diego Chargers coming up here on Wild, Wild Card Weekend. And I asked Drew, I said, I see that you, you listed A.J. Green as your favorite Bengal. Why don't you like Andy Dalton? <laughs> and he said, well, I, I do like Andy's game a lot. I've never had a chance to meet him. I, I've met A.J. a number of times, really like him. So that's why he is my favorite Bengal right now. Well, Paul, you're an old quarterback. You know, I mean, He's going to like the wide receivers. The other quarterbacks, there's probably a bit of a competitive edge there. <laughs> Looking forward to watching Drew play for Mark Stoops there at Kentucky as he looks to rebuild that program into an SEC winner. Flush down in the backfield and Drew. Well, if you're going to throw it away, go ahead and throw it away. With a chance for the interception there. Chance for the reception, Trey Quinn. All-time leader. Receiving yards in the nation, but uh, couldn't come up with that one. Yeah, Malcolm Parrish almost got the interception right there. Parrish is a defensive back going to Georgia, and he says his favorite NFL player is Champ Bailey, former teammate of mine with the Washington Redskins. If you're a DB from Georgia going to Georgia, I'd say that's a pretty good favorite player. That is the name that everyone knows when you're talking about the cornerback position for the Bulldogs. Champ Bailey, not only historically one of the great college players, but a future Pro Football Hall of Famer. Zach Schmidt on to punt and Ross. This will make you feel good. I know you're a Princeton guy. He's going to play at Harvard. No. <laughs> That's our hated rival. <laughs> Thought you might like the Ivy League connection at least. And that's Chris Lamons returning for the east side. Last declaration we saw, Niles Morgan, linebacker, headed to Notre Dame to play middle linebacker for the Irish. Two more declarations left. Right now, let's meet uh, the, the teammates that he will see there in South Bend. Nick Wisher. <laughs> Nick Wisher. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Nick Wisher. Quentin Nelson. <laughs> oh, man. Nick Wisher. Quentin Nelson. Richard Jurgen third. Go Irish. Army All-American Bowl is brought to you by the U.S. Army. They're strong and there's Army strong.
and by the San Antonio Convention and Visitors Bureau. We always enjoy our time here in San Antonio for the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. We're watching the game play out right now in the fourth quarter. This is during the week. The combine tryouts for next year's U.S. Army All-American Bowl. We already know these players are in. Martin Simmons, what do you see here? Well, you look at that last name on the list, Ricky Town. He's the teammate of Bryce Dixon, who's out here. He's the number one quarterback in the country for 2015. Out of California, already committed to the University of Alabama. So big pickup there. Uh, but it's a very impressive list early on. De Deontay Thompson, a uh, kid who was an outstanding kid at the combine yesterday. Tristan Hodge uh, and then Dalen Mack right there. Texas a and A&M commit. Uh, really impressive group already committed to the game for next year. Should be an outstanding roster. All right, Barton, thank you. We look forward to getting to know all these kids uh, next year at this time. U.S. Army All-American Bowl Week. That will be the 16th annual. Breaking down that film of Bryce Dixon, the tight end, got to see a lot of Ricky Town at quarterback. You can see why he's the number one QB in the country coming into next year. I mean, he's got mobility, he's got arm strength, he's got instincts as far as where to deliver the football. And a reminder to everyone, top of the hour, doubleheader of Wild Card Weekend in the NFL. First up, it's the Colts and the Chiefs to be followed by the Saints and the Eagles. You can watch them both right here on NBC. This is Will Greer looking deep. to Florida finds Damari Kidd who play college football at Clemson. That was a ridiculous throw by Will Greer. Steps up right before he gets hit. Not even a great spiral. A Peyton Manning ball, but it gets right to Damari Kidd in stride. That's the biggest play of the day for either squad. The presence of mind to evade the defender out at the edge and then reset his feet to deliver a strike down the field. You can see why a talented young wideout would want to go to Clemson after watching the Orange Bowl last night. Sandy oh, yeah. Watkins, wow. Elijah Hood, the former Notre Dame commit, now on his way to North Carolina, picks up four. We've been highlighting the lungs from this game throughout the night. Marty Snyder, you've got more. Yes, indeed. Will Greer coming back into the game, and he has an unusual situation. He's not the most popular guy in his house. You may have heard of his younger brother, 15-year-old Nash Greer. He's a star on the social media app Vine. He has 4.5 million followers. That is second most in the world. I talked to Will about it earlier. He said, hey, I love starting in the videos. I've even produced a few videos myself. But the only people missing from his family here today, his brother Nash and his mom. Why? Because Nash is on an Icelandic television show today and his mom is up there with him. He is a popular man around the world, and he's now Will's little brother. And everybody calls him. He says, hey, are you Will's brother? And says, yes, I am. Hey, that's good insight. I've got a lot written down on Will Greer here in my Will Greer box. I don't have any of that. I'm, I'm personally really into I Icelandic TV shows. <laughs> I'm guessing Nash Greer has more followers and more viewers than this Icelandic TV show. <laughs> Running back to his right, Sony Michelle. Sony has a touchdown, the only touchdown for the East team today. Looking for Josh Malone, incomplete. And even though the Tennessee Volunteers uh, struggled on the field this fall, they're winning a lot in recruiting. Josh Malone really the face of that right now. And according to 24-7 Sports, they're the only top 10 team in the recruiting class for this year that had a losing record during the fall. So Tennessee finding a lot of success on the recruiting track. Butch Jones has done a lot of things, adding some energy into that program. There's some games that maybe they had a shot at winning with Tennessee. who started off hot. He's put that program around in quick fashion. Jacob Park, who picks Georgia over Alabama, throwing on his run across his body. And that one incomplete. You can see the frustration there from Miles Autry. He knew he had a chance. That's the second time we've seen Jacob Park one-hop a pass on the move. And it can't be easy when you're rotating play-by-play. -play. You see Park coming off. Will Greer comes back in for a big fourth down here if the E squad wants to try to cut this to one score. Mr. Football in South Carolina comes to the sideline, and the number one player in North Carolina, according to 24-7 Sports, Will Greer, 
Back on the field, the number two quarterback in the country behind just Kyle Allen. Nice pocket to step into. And he misfires looking for Damari Kitt. Damari hauled in the long pass earlier to bring the East team this deep into West Territory. It's going to be declaration time again when we come back. We've already seen seven. We've seen one say he's going to Ohio State. That's Eric Smith. Marshawn Lattimore. He's also an Ohio native. Is he going to play for the Buckeyes? His declaration on the other side of this break. we've already seen by that man Eric Smith at a Glenville High School near Cleveland he's going to Ohio State now his high school teammate Marshawn Lattimore is he going to Ohio State here's Marty Snyder we're about to find out Paul yes the second half of the combination of the Glenville backfield so that means coach Ted Ginn senior is back mom and dad are here to support Marshawn as well and we're down to Oregon Alabama Ohio State are you gonna follow your teammate where are you gonna go uh... First of all, I want to I thank God for putting me in this position I am right now. And I want to thank all of them for just supporting me and uh, sticking with me throughout the process. And um, the people back home and all that. But uh, Eric already gave me up, so I'm going to be going to Ohio State. <laughs> His teammate gave him up earlier, said he wanted to come to Ohio State with him. Some other teammates back here congratulating that as well. And uh, why the decision to go to Ohio State? Were you and Eric truly a package deal in this? Yeah, you could say so. We uh, always wanted to go to the same school. And plus, we got uh, teammates already down there. So it's like a family. Big yeah. smile for mom. Her baby boy staying in Ohio. He's going to Ohio State, Paul. And going to play cornerback there. Also told us he's going to play a little bit of wide receiver, too. It's not unprecedented. Remember, Chris Gamble played both sides of the ball, and he showed so much playmaking ability at Glenville that I wouldn't be surprised if they get him some snaps on the offensive side of the ball. Gerard Hurd, the quarterback, the Texas commits. And that is the fly sweep around the right side. KD Cannon for the west side. Going to play wide receiver for the Baylor Bears. And Marshawn Lattimore going to be a corner for the Ohio State University. Well, and this tape will look familiar to the tape we saw earlier with Eric Smith. The things he's able to do in terms of high-pointing the football. And then you'll see him, the instincts and the physicality. That's one of the real hallmarks of these Glenville kids is just the physicality they have. Even the skill position guys, even the corners that you wouldn't think would be that physical, they are when they come out of Glenville. It's interesting that Lattimore, really during the recruiting process, had an opportunity to choose either side of the ball. He prefers defensive back over receiver. Gerard Hurd picking up 10 yards there. Let's go back to the sideline more. Learn a little more about Marshawn Lattimore. Well, guys, talking about that Glenville pipeline, and we've seen guys like Troy Smith and Christian Bryan and Ted Ginn come from that Glenville pipeline to Ohio State. There are some people in Ohio that think Marshawn Lattimore could be as talented as anybody out of that pipeline that's come before him. He talked about it. He's got the ability to play cornerback. That's where he wants to play on the next level, but he very much could end up getting snaps offensively because of those ball skills and big playability on offense. Here's Gerard Hurd looking to his left and firing. And that one's incomplete. And Gerard, an example of players. And there's Marshawn Lattimore, the Ohio State cornerback to be, giving this game nine future Ohio State Buckeyes. But a lot of these players have to deal with change in the form of the head coach they committed to leaving for one reason or another. Mac Brown is not going to be the head coach for him at Texas. Will it be Charlie Strong? We'll find out. But he told us yesterday he's still keeping it open. Going to see if he's a fit for the new system. And in the meantime, he's thinking about Nebraska, UCLA, and also Boise State. the middle for the West squad. That is Royce Freeman out of San Diego who will be an Oregon Duck next fall. Here are the players who are declared already today. And we're still waiting for Joe Mixon. That's a big one because 
The young man from Northern California is ranked as the number one all-purpose back in the nation. It's either going to be Oklahoma, UCLA, or Wisconsin. And for a lot of these guys, I think, you know, you look at the consensus and people have an idea of where they might be going. Joe Mixon, people are all over the board. I mean, most people think UCLA, some think Oklahoma. You know, he's not one like the Glenville guys that people thought, well, I know where he's going. Nobody knows where Joe Mixon's going. <laughs> Mixon's made a big imprint on the game today. And here's a look at the skill set that shows you why, because he's listed as a running back, but he's 6'2 and 200 pounds. I mean, he's got the build where he can play wide receiver. The junior year in high school for Joe Mixon, he was really used a lot in the slot. And then as they transitioned into his senior year, really mainly a ball carrier, toting the rock, using that physicality, the elusiveness that we've seen him highlight on screen passes and runs. And to show you how important he is, what a priority he is to the UCLA staff, Jim Mora. On a Saturday, the Bruins knocked off USC the last Saturday in November. Two days later, the first Monday in December, he and some members of the staff made a home visit to Joe Mixon. We'll see if that home visit is going to pay off here. Joe Mixon will tell all of us where he will attend college here later in the fourth quarter. Gerard Hurd standing in a little bit too long and going down. And guess who? It was Dante Sawyer yet again. His yeah. third sack of the game. He's going to come from the bottom of your screen, the left side. You'll see him coming around. Another inside move. And this time, he's able to take down Hurd. Sawyer making a name for himself today. It's interesting. We talk about the effect that a Johnny Manziel has for Texas A&M and the offensive side of the football. But you look at Jadavian Clowney and how he's really put that South Carolina defensive front on the national stage. They're going to have at least two first-round picks coming off that defensive front in this year's NFL draft. And Dante Sawyer, he's been able to gravitate towards that. And the East team trailing 21-6. to Time running out to get back into this one. That's Sony Michelle, pardon me, Chris Lamons. Bringing it back. We have one declaration left. Earlier this month, Joe Mixon told us the three schools in the running for his running skills. UCLA, Oklahoma, and Wisconsin. He's going to pick one of those three on the other side of this break. I'm Joe Mixon, running back for the West. Find out where I will be playing college ball live on NBC. Mixon, the number one all-purpose running back in the nation. Right next to him is Lewis Johnson. He's going to get his declaration for college. All right, thanks very much, Paul. Well, this is the big one, the one we've been waiting for all day. I can still see the anticipation in your eyes and in the eyes of your family and your coaches who are here. Over 1,700 yards, 28 touchdowns, 50 offers down to four hats. Yes, so now we have Oklahoma, Wisconsin, UCLA and also a Cal Bears hat. So Joe, the country is waiting to know where are you going to play your college football? Well, first off, I want to thank my family. I want to thank God. I want to thank my coaches and everybody back home, you know, for representing me. And I came down here, you know, to represent them and put on for a show for everybody. But I'll be, I'll be taking my talents to play for Coach Gundy and Coach Stoops at Oklahoma. Oklahoma Sooners! Boomer Sooner. Now, I'm just wondering if that Super Bowl win had anything to do with you finally making this decision. Well, it, it, meant, it meant a lot. It did. <laughs> it did. And um, once they won that Alabama game, that, that sealed the deal. And now I'm a Sooner. Let's get it. Can you help us understand what it's been like to go through all of the offers, the pressure, even this week with players here at this game trying to get you to convince you to come to their school? Well, everybody been doing a lot of recruiting on me, and, you know, i just been taking everything all in. But now, you know, I got a heart. I mean, basically, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not Oklahoma now. That's all I got. Time to exhale for Joe Mixon, Paul. He's heading to Oklahoma. Congratulations to you and your family. Thank you. All right. Hey, Lewis, as I watched the Sugar Bowl two nights ago from a hotel room here in San, in San Antonio, I wondered, is this affecting, how many of these kids is going to affect the electricity in that building, the points, the way they're piling up? And it turned out to be the tiebreaker for Joe Mixon. Don't 
see the hook and ladder with more than four minutes to play, but you see Greer throws it to Audrey, who gets it right to Michelle. Pretty impressive how well they executed that. I wonder how many times they worked on that at practice this week. Uh, Greer to Artavis Scott, then back to Michelle down the left side. It looked like they've been working on that for months. Now we're seeing a bit of tempo from the East team on the offensive side of the football as well. And a new quarterback, Jacob Park, being chased out of the pocket. Nice job of keeping his feet. And that's where the nice job ended for Jacob Park. That's Davion Hall, the future Baylor Bear with the INT. The grandmother of Davion Hall nicknamed him Squirt because he was just a small kid, described himself as fat as a toddler, but we've seen him grow into his body at six foot two, over 200 in pounds, playing the safety position on his way to Baylor. Not only the offensive talent for the Bears, now recruiting great players on defense as well. Get you back inside the Alamo Dome right after this. The number one all-purpose running back in the nation. Basically could have gone anywhere. Joe Mixon said, I'm gonna play for Bob Stoops at Oklahoma. Wearing the hats and also the smile. We've seen Adrian Peterson on the air with just some clips of him talking about his experience in the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. I'd say the skill set of Joe Mixon in that same mode. And off the left side, that's Nate Starks. For more on Joe Mixon and what his commitment to Oklahoma means, here's Barton Simmons. Well, guys, you, you heard Joe Mixon talk about that Sugar Bowl shine, how excited he was about that win over Alabama. Well, all UCLA heard is that shine may wear off here in a couple weeks. We're going to keep on chasing him. So don't expect anyone to slow down on Joe Mixon. He's, his phone's still going to get blown up. But he is an outstanding get for Kel Gundy, Bob Stoops at Oklahoma because of his versatility. You saw him in the screen game earlier today, and he's great as a pass catcher uh, outside of the pocket. Really got athletic, versatile prospect. Some of the very energetic coaches on that OU staff. You mentioned Kale Gundy, Jerry Montgomery, people who are going to have to, as Barton mentions there, stay after Joe Mixon just because of the modern day in recruiting right now where until you get to, as you mentioned, Ross, signing day with an ink. Right, and, and what adds even more intrigue to it is over the last couple of days, there's been a lot of speculation of teams like the Cleveland Browns and the Detroit Lions in the National Football League having interest in Oklahoma head coach Bob Stoops. And reportedly, for the first time since he's been at the helm of the Sooners, Stoops has been reciprocating some of that interest. So there's a lot that still has to play out before that first Wednesday in February. And yeah, Joe told us yesterday one of the many things he liked about Oklahoma, the continuity on the staff. And I went back and looked. Bob Stoops just finished his 15th season. And that's a big man with a football. Bryce Dixon told us earlier that he's going to USC as opposed to UCLA. Catches it on the right side, sprints across the left side of the field to pick up 32. We've seen how Steve Sarkeesian has used the tight end position over the last few years as a head coach at Washington. Bryce Dixon has that same type of skill set. We see now not only the ability to catch the football away from his cage, but the run after catch that you need in a big play guy. Joe Mixon all smiles. Watching his teammates sprint across the field. Outside zone over here. Kyle Allen, the quarterback. Liked it as well. The top-ranked quarterback in the nation on his way to Texas A&M. And the open receiver. <laughs> That's K.D. Cannon. Before he plays for Baylor in Waco. Getting it done this afternoon in San Antonio. Well, out of any, Kyle Allen has been so impressive. I mean, here they're, they're up by 15 points with a minute and a half to go, and he's still slinging it down there, down the sideline to KD Cannon. When we talk about the smoothness of the route running ability that KD Cannon has displayed throughout the week. He's only six foot tall, but he can high point the football like a receiver who's six five, six eight. Some of these other skyscrapers that we've seen become so prevalent in football today. More of a power forward type, but KD Cannon not that level of size, but we see there the skill set on display to take defenders to flight school. And the West team looking to score once again. That's Royce Freeman. And he has three touchdowns this afternoon. Making Oregon Duck fans very happy because the San Diego native will be in Eugene next fall. Really looks like another former Doug Jonathan Stewart. 
just the ability as a big guy to be elusive and to have the speed to turn the corner. He's willing to turn and get north and south, run downhill, barrel over defenders as we've seen on previous touchdown runs. But I think at the collegiate level, that ability to have a big back who's 225, almost 230 pounds with that elusiveness, and then to have some of these smaller, more lightning quick type of backs as well. Putting a little exclamation point on an outstanding senior season when he was named the outstanding player in the San Diego area. Scored 41 touchdowns at Imperial High School. And has three touchdowns here this afternoon. And all four of the West touchdowns coming on the ground. Our Marty Snyder on the sideline with the MVP presentation. Paul, time to present the Pete Dawkins Trophy. And it goes to Joe Mixon, who's had a busy five minutes here to present the MVP Trophy. Major General Alan Bachelet. Major General? Thanks very much, and uh, congratulations on behalf of the United States Army for being named the MVP of the Army All-American Bowl. How about that, Joe Mixon? It's been a crazy five minutes for you, hasn't it? You announced you're going to Oklahoma, and now you're the MVP of the game. Oh, yeah, it means a lot. And, you know, shout out to my... West Side team over there, you know, <laughs> had hard, park, hard practice today, and you know, we had a, we had fought hard in that game, and we did a good job. As you watch his rushing touchdown, he did it through the air, he also did it on the ground today with a touchdown, Joe Mixon, your Pete Dawkins MVP for the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. All right, as Marty mentioned, a big five minutes earlier in the fourth quarter, announced that he selected Oklahoma over UCLA and Wisconsin. And now carrying the MVP trophy. Royce Freeman might tap him on the shoulder and say, what about my three touchdowns? <laughs> yeah. Or Kyle Allen. <laughs> I think might want a piece of that Pete Dawkins trophy as well. An embarrassment of riches on the offensive side of the football for the West squad. And Kyle Allen's up the top-ranked quarterback in the nation, according to 24-7 Sports. And this is Sonny Michel, the running back, one of two running backs in this game who will play at Georgia. But Kyle Allen started this game eight for eight. Cooled off a little bit, but uh, showed off his talent before he heads to College Station next week. Joe Mixon from Northern California. Going to get comfortable with the transportation down to Norman, Oklahoma. Said the deciding factor to become a Sooner, the way the team played in the Sugar Bowl on Thursday night. It's not just the similarity in body type between himself and Adrian Peterson, but also the ability for both of these taller tailbacks to drop their pad level, to run behind their pads, have that forward lean that you're looking for. Because as I evaluated film on Joe Mixon, I'm thinking, nah, there's no way he's six foot two. And the first thing I did when I saw him this week, Ross, was stand next to him. He's not much shorter than me. He's every bit of six two, every bit of 205, 210 pounds, but he has that elusive ability like a back half his size. Yeah, the thing I think is just crazy, and uh, it's understandable, though, but he told us that Thursday night's game, as Paul had mentioned, had a big impact on him. You know, where would he have just declared if Oklahoma <laughs> got smoked the other night in the Sugar Bowl? You know, I mean, it's amazing the different factors that come into play leading up to a commitment or signing day. Scrambling around here, that's Will Greer, and he is set. Getting the job done is Anu Tawa. He's going to UCLA. You know what level of talent the Bruins have on the offensive side of the football. They're adding defensive playmakers throughout today's game as well. And that's how it comes to a close. The West team from start to finish. Strong defense. Very good ground game. Some solid early passing from the top quarterback of the nation right there. Kyle Allen headed to Texas A&M, and the West team wins 28 L drafts. Ross and Anthony, final thoughts here. Well, I just think it's cool to see the guys down the field. They all make friendships, really lifelong friendships that last at the next level and even into the NFL. And just the respect that all these kids that are on high have showed to the military guys all week as well.
This game is always an outstanding experience. And what I notice year after year is that it seems like the players get bigger, faster, stronger. It never ends the increase in athleticism. But a game like this, not only focusing on the athlete, but the all-around person and this experience in interacting with our Army. Uh, the 15th annual U.S. Army All-American Bowl in the books. We saw nine declarations today. The last one by that man right there, perhaps the most anticipated. The top all-purpose running back in the nation, Joe Mixon from Northern California, selected the Oklahoma Sooners. Loved what he saw in the Sugar Bowl on Thursday night. Our final score here inside the Alamo Dome, 28-6. The West team wins behind a very strong ground game. Three rushing touchdowns from Royce Freeman who will play his college football at Oregon. For all of us here at NBC Sports, thank you for watching the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. Stay with us next, a doubleheader of Wild Card Weekend. Chiefs and the Colts, then it's the Saints and the Eagles. Bob Costas and Dan Patrick host Football Night in America next.